All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number three with Valor. Uh, Valor, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is uh, Valor. I'm a pet hunter. I'm currently going for all pets. I have 45 out of 46 pets, only missing BA. I am rank one Nightmare KC and Silver Star in Oblivion. And I also use the stream quite a bit. Not so much recently, but in the past, uh, stream quite a lot. So maybe you've seen me on Twitch before. So I have something like I want to just ask like up like outright so I remember you streamed I like honestly I don't even know the time frame anymore but I think it was like a year ago you were at like 25 pets I swear like I uh, yeah so I seriously started pet hunting in October last year I think it was so just over a year ago uh, at the time I was 12 pets and I've gained like I don't know 30 something pets in the past year or something I've made a lot of progress Jesus. over the past year yeah yeah that's insane because i remember like i I'm trying to think when were you hunting bandos because i remember there was yeah a... that was the first thing i actually actually streamed okay so uh, what my how many hunting. pets were you then uh i was banos my 19 i think so sub 20 still damn so like 26 pets since then yeah and now you're only yeah. missing one mm -hmm. that's yeah ridiculous. i've made a lot of progress mostly due to um COVID lockdown i've had a lot more time than so... i usually have how many hours okay so what's your nightmare kc and how many hours did you put into nightmare uh nightmare kc is 14.9k something like that i don't remember actually i do remember it's 14,894 uh hours efficiently 1100 but i think it's close to Jeez. 1200 if you consider all the times that people would just force breaks on you because i obviously did a lot of team kills so how many on other people as how... well how many hours is that pet just like on rate? It used to be 270 something. So I went about over four times the rate for it uh, in hours wise. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. It's, uh, and then like, it was pretty rough. And then solos wise, what's it now? Uh, I think they reduce it to 1 800. So it's like 220 hours or so efficiently okay. to the solo pet rate. Uh, as opposed to 275 or so before that, I think. Maybe is that, 285. Is that like assuming? 15 minute kit or like 16 minute kills or something like that uh, i think it's like like 3.7 kills an hour 3.6 kills so yeah you're okay. looking at like 16 minute kills on average i think which is long-term doable if yeah, you're yeah, pretty yeah. good at the boss and you got an alt there not having to run yeah, back so and forth exactly three minutes. when i watch you stream obviously use a lot of time by yeah, going yeah. To the I, I do waste a bunch of time and i've even realized how much time i waste but it's like it's inevitable for you so yeah you it's like really inevitable it and it's always like it it's also like necessary i feel i feel like those breaks for me just you know, not <laughs> killing it's just like all right this is just nice not one that's the one looking. thing i really hate like the downtime between stuff so that for oh, me that would yeah. be a deal breaker honestly i think a lot of the people that the team nightmare with me experience that I really don't like breaks. I remember there was a clip of Casey once when he was streaming Nightmare. We have this uh, channel in the Discord, the Patanda's Discord, for people who do Nightmare efficiently. And you have to like, submit your gear to get the rank to access the channel. And one of the people in his chat was like, uh, yeah, I just got the rank. Uh, what can I expect from the teams? And Casey was like, yeah, just make sure you don't get on the team of Valor because there's no <laughs> breaks. I hope you don't get any bladder issues or... I hope you've had your food because once you're in there, you're locked in there for hours. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. I hate downtime quite a lot. I think it slows you down so much. And I feel it's like also one of the reasons. Oh, sorry, Hugo. No, 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 you're, you're good. I feel like that's just like inevitable kind of when you're a pet hunter and you're actually mm -hmm. going for all pets, you're going to get that mindset of like, you're going to just start realizing how much time you're wasting. Just yeah, true. The little it's, a, it's such a long hour oh, uh, goal. Yeah. So. Any hour that's not spent on it is kind of like a wasted one if you're at least logged in. Yep. So just for you guys listening, I am going to um, have up on my screen because I know you guys probably don't want to watch me do Herblor all day. I have <laughs> a little playlist of some of the things that Valor's uh, done in the past, uh, some of the pet hunts he's done, and just some of these clips are of Valor. So this will be in the background just playing and it'll go through a few videos um and it'll just be silent but yeah uh let's move on to the first topic i want to talk about um oh i just realized if i <laughs> i realized if i'm having this on the display i can't check my twitter feed without it interrupting do you have so. a phone <laughs> yeah i <laughs> actually just use it on the phone open on the that phone genius yes so um first thing i want to talk about is a I'm just like literally 
stalling to load this up. One sec. We got the time. <laughs> we we have a bunch. Of time. <laughs> okay, so um, first thing I wanted to touch on was um, a uh, a comment in the thread by DK Ho. He says, "Staying motivated on RNG grinds." So me and you both we both do RNG grinds. Mm -hmm. um, what keeps you motivated? Um, it's pretty hard because most people just assume that if you play 10 hours and you don't get the item, it's like a waste of day. But I mostly just look at it as if you're working towards the KC, you're going to get that RNG goal on. So I feel like putting in more hours towards that goal is always going to bring you close to actually achieving it. Um, and the chance of never getting that pad or item is legit zero statistically. Yep. So as long as you get enough rolls on the table, you're eventually going to get that. Uh, besides that, I also think that it's hard to get into at first. If you have like a low pet count or you're just studying RNG goals, it's pretty difficult to get into. But once you're already locked in for thousands of hours, you see that end goal getting closer and you just want to want to finish that. So I think it's difficult at first, but once you get into that mindset, it's just pretty easy to stick to for a long time. Yeah, and I felt... I don't know how you see that. I have felt like... Okay, so I do different RNG grinds. Like some of the RNG yeah. grinds I do are like exclusively RNG, like my mace hunt right now. Like mm -hmm. me hunting a mace, it's like that's just that's the only thing I'm going for. I don't care about overall completion yet. So I just want to <laughs> You will mace. be once it's just the only item you're yeah, missing. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um there's other grinds I've done where it's like kind of RNG related, but at the same time it's like not. So me do you have an example? Me completing the elite clue log is mm -hmm. like rng but at the same time um it's okay so it's like rng because of third age like i am uh i'm like a third age hunter as well like i would love I to know, yeah. collect third age and so um that is kind of the rng aspect of it like how many can i get but i'm not like exclusively saying i want this third age piece but True. the 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 thing that's not rng about it is just completing the normal log because it's like uh, I need to get full tuxedo, and each piece is one in twenty five hundred, like per casket. If you wanted a specific mm -hmm. piece, so just on average, it takes one in six, or it takes six thousand elites on average to get. And that's the the rarest item on the table, right? The tuxedo yeah. pieces. Or, okay, so you're supposed to have everything else before you finish the tuxedo pieces. Yeah, except for lava dragon mask, ring of nature, and what's the other? You have piece? any of those? Um, I do not. I don't have any of those. Okay. And those are as rare as Gilded, but there's only two of them. So mm -hmm. technically, um, those are going to be a little bit longer than the Tuxedo. I'm just I'm just like low-key banking on getting those getting two. Them. Like, during it. <laughs> I mean, you got to have that fade as well if, yeah. if you're going for long RNG grinds. And you that's the... Start off thinking you're not going to get it. So Exactly. And that's the thing mm -hmm. with like Elite Clues is like um, there's just so many to do. And I've already planned out I'm going to do 5,000. If I had looked at... If I had had that same mindset with Nightmare, I don't think it would be as painful as it is. Where it's like, if I were to just have told myself, let's do 3,000 Nightmare solos, you know? Mm -hmm. like it, I probably would have just been like, obviously I can't convince, I don't have like the capacity to <laughs> like manipulate my mind into thinking, let's just do mm -hmm. 3,000 KC because yeah, deep down I'll know I'm, doing, yeah, I'm yeah. going for a mace. But um. No, I got to add the same when I was doing uh, Omelette Grind. I think I did like 2.5k regular chambers around that. And then uh, I realized it's kind of a waste of time because all I'm going for is the pad. So I just moved on to challenge mode raids. Because at the same time, you'll be going for dust and you'll be going for yeah. the KC caves as well. So even if you're not getting any of the RNG-based things, you're at least knocking out KC towards that other goal you're going for. So yeah. I'd say combining goals like that wherever possible is ideal. So there's skillers I know that like absolutely despise RNG. <laughs> of like, course, yeah. They absolutely despise it. I almost feel I like it, yeah. I almost feel like there's a mindset. Like it's almost part of your personality to just absolutely hate RNG. Like I I don't mind RNG that much. Uh, it just I hate it, and I think we both hate it when there's like a really crappy grind. We go like unlucky yeah on. i think the worst part about rng goals is if you're doing something that's absolute ass for a lot of time and you see everyone else around you completing that yep. and like <laughs> not even a tenth of the time you spend on it yeah. i think that is pretty difficult to push through in general 
Yeah. Uh, so I definitely understand the <laughs> the hate for some RNG goals the scalers have because if you just if you scale you get one to one pretty much. You put in one yeah. hour, you get one hour of progress, and I think that they look at RNG goals where you don't necessarily get that. I think I heard on your earlier podcast uh, you were saying like yeah you could easily go two thousand hours lucky or dry on a pad or on all pads. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah, I, can, I can definitely see some people that have completed all pads in uh, about half the time it's taken me to get to 45. Like, no joke, half. So that means that I would have gotten to all pads twice before I even got it once. So how many it's... hours are you dry currently? Because uh, I know I you're dry check it. on Hold all up. pads. Yeah, and obviously you don't it. have BA pet yet, so that it's not fully mm-hmm. determined. So I'm currently almost 1,500 hours unlucky. Ugh. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Puts me at 6.5k total efficient hours spent bat hunting. And there's people I've completed in like 3,000 hours. Jeez. And so, wait, yeah. h- how many hours is it total, like on average for all pets? 5.3, I think. 5.3, okay. Is yeah. there an Iron Man sheet that says how many hours it is for Iron Man? Because I'm assuming I don't it's think a there's, a, there's a sheet for it. I noticed quite a few dedicated Iron Pet Hunters, but I don't think they've made a sheet for it. Okay. I know Iron Queen uses the, the main one. Okay. 5,300 hours. Mm-hmm. And you went, so you're currently 1,500 dry, so you're at like yeah, 6,800. So I'm at 6,500 because I have 5,000 hours worth of progress because I'm missing one pet still. That's mm-hmm. 300 hours. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So if I got the BA pet right now, it'd be 1,200 hours unlucky in total. Dang. Mm-hmm. And who out of the people, okay, so how many people have all pets right now? Do you know the 13, number? 13, 14, one 13. of those two. Okay. Yeah. And who's the luckiest guy out of those? Do you know? Uh, is there just like uh, an objective like this was the luckiest yeah, I guy? Yeah, think, I think my friend Mateo, his first game name is Complain. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. He has all pets, and I think he completed it with 1,500 hours lucky. Okay. So, yeah, he's completed it in like 3,000 hours quicker than me. What was Coxie? Like how, what was his average? Probably was around five k. I think he went like maybe a couple hundred hours lucky, so okay. pretty close to so average luck. And that was just because of Bloodhound, right? Like he that just yeah. I mean, I think he got lucky it. on all the four hard bats, Nightmare, Bloodhound. Oh, Walmart, true, 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 true. And BA. So yeah, that adds up to a lot. So even like twenty k banners doesn't really hurt that much in the long term. Who was that? I'm trying to even think of what is. Oh yeah, I think it was Carol, the Iron Man with like oh, 41 yeah. pets that got mm-hmm. banned for he had a real fuck world trading. Of pets and then he got yeah, launched. he was just yeah. he was like miles ahead of every other Iron Man. I don't even know Dude, how. He, he would have probably completed it by now. Oh yeah, he, easy. He only had a couple pets left. Wasn't he banned like two years ago or something? Yeah, like it was a, a long time ago. It was even before I started pet hunting, so it must have been at least a year and a half ago or so. Yeah, no, that's that's crazy. It definitely has an Iron. How do you get? Banned for other routine is kind of odd to me, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. I, I'm just like, if you were so dedicated to pet hunting, I mean, I'm assuming <laughs> he was really lucky. I, I don't mean, actually must... know how many hours he put in. He was probably lucky, as yeah. I think all the Iron Man are with very high pet counts, but still, even then, you've spent thousands and thousands of hours of going for one goal and you just throw that away so easily. It just kind of hurts me to think it's about so it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine just throwing away <laughs> what I've spent my time on now. Just, yeah, I don't know. So, um, what, what made you, okay. So let's just, let's just like go back to like the beginning of when you started OSR. It's like, okay, when did you begin and what, when did you, or why did you want to pet hunt? Like what made you want to pet hunt? Yeah. So I started, uh, the week after old school was released with a couple of my real life friends because we played in the past. I wasn't very serious. Honestly, I'll be, I think we all made pures. I remember that at the time the GMO was worth like a mill. And I had to spend a fuck ton of hours just chopping news to afford it. And I lost it within my first PKing trip. And after that, I never PKed again. I was so devastated. Oh so, uh, yeah, I started focusing more on my stats. Uh, eventually, I changed accounts. So that's not the account I'm playing on right now. But I came back in like 2014, 2015, maybe. Uh, I maxed. Then I was kind of lost for a while. I think a lot of people are when they max. So what I did was I just did some random TOB in chambers because it's kind of the default thing to do when you're a PVMer. Yep. Then I decided to max my alt because I just didn't know what to do. And at that point, I basically completed all of those things. I was like, okay, I, I either stop now or just set myself a long-term goal. Felt like two and was kind of just way, way too long and just kind of boring at the same time. So yep. the only thing that kind of remains is as a main account is going for pets. I didn't really think I was going to go for all of them, but. Once you started getting into that mindset, it just comes like a natural progression. If that makes any sense. Yeah. No, I, uh, after I max, so I maxed last year in December, 
Mm -hmm. I was like debating going for all pets and it's still something I like passively want to do just get all pets Mm -hmm. but it's just I plan to play this game for years and years so it's like it's just yeah you have a long term outlook on the game so yeah yeah that's Mm -hmm. not my focus but I remember just trying to get into it and I just thought of like the most AIDS pets like Nightmare came out Hydra (laughs) things like that where it's like I can't like I just like it pains me to do this over other things right now and obviously and and like obviously pet hunting is not just all great fun and stuff like it is definitely not very it's very grindy yeah Yeah, it's just I always looked at people that had like a lot of pets or all pets and just thought to myself like how is that even possible like why would you spend hundreds of hours killing dks that shit is so boring yep but it's not like the activity itself is always going to be fun it's just that sense of progression that keeps you going i guess and just seeing yourself get closer to the goal and having like a community around it is a big help too. So but yeah, I think I think all pets, even for Iron Man, is going to be realistic as long as you have like a long term outlook on the game. Oh yeah, definitely realistic now. When I think there's, I don't know, there's got to be at least ten irons now with thirty plus pets and like. Yeah, that's even a few. I think there's two or forty plus now as well. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Is Iron Queen at forty? I think she's, she's like thirty eight, maybe. Yeah. She's close at least. Yeah, she has a really who, so. As who well. are the ones with, uh, forty plus? Of the ones I know, it's a uh, Master Barter or something. I don't okay. really know how to pronounce his name, and um, forgot the other guy's name. Honestly, there's like there's another Is one. It Ginny? He's actually close. No, no, I don't think so. What's Ginny at? Do you I know? have no idea, but it's someone else, and okay. he has like forty one or forty two, I think, and he has like all the hard ones done too. So I think what he has Damn. left is actually doable. But for that to happen as an Iron Man, you just you have to get, to get lucky on Bloodhound. Lucky. You have yeah. to get lucky on Bloodhound well, and Corp. I feel like yeah, and even the God Wars maybe. Oh yeah, true. I true, think true. if, if you, you combine those, well, if you win nineteen k dry on a on a Iron for Bandos, that's so yeah, that's fun. that's that's impossible. I would almost say at yeah, some point it's disgusting. You have to get extremely lucky for an Iron Man to complete all the pads. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I went nine point five k for Corp, but. If you have to do that as an iron, it's just so much time. It's, it's just, so bad. But you're not putting into anything else, so I don't know. It's it's rough. Yeah. I mean, at least... I mean, if you're a dedicated pet hunter iron, you can get 13 kills an hour, which is it's still <laughs> bad, but it's not like... And that's. You know. I would say it's more doable than... Yeah. If, you, if you're looking at five kills an hour, yeah, I would say that going for the pet in general is not going to be worth it. Yeah. But I got lucky you, on my very, pet. Yeah, I know. That's fucking sick. But oh, I'm so glad. I think if you go twice the rate on that, and it's fairly easy to go twice the rate on anything, then you're just fucked. Yep. It's, I wouldn't say it's very realistic at that point. So I think even as an iron, you have to start looking at like um, kind of a long-term plan and like start building your alts around it. Or if you want to go for that goal, that is. You have to kind of prepare for stuff. You can't just assume that you're going to get lucky on everything. Yep. Okay, so I have uh, another question from somebody in the thread. He's, he asks, what was your favorite pet grind? And what, I'm assuming for you, what are your goals after all pets? So first one, what was your favorite pet to grind on? Uh, okay, that I think sounds I, messed up, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and then goals I, afterward. I really like going for Omelette because Chambers is just uh, pretty good content in general. It took me quite a bit too long, honestly, to really enjoy it. But the general process, I really enjoyed it for Chambers. Um, I like Bandos too. Kind of a lot of the God Wars dungeons were pretty fun. I like playing uh, some alts on the side and speeding up the kills. So anything that involves like a lot of accounts is pretty fun to me. Um, for the same reason I liked Corp, even though I went really dry, that method was really good. I'm sure it will show up in the video somewhere in the background because I sent you a clip of that method as well. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much the ones that I really like the most. And then the worst was by far a nightmare. <laughs> without a question uh, without a shadow of doubt in my mind and there's so no way tragic. to really alt it either like no you compared to like an iron anyway. man like there's no way to speed those things up no so. true it's not like uh, you can dolo and get a better pet rate yep just like oh uh, especially now iron yeah no, especially now yeah yep. for sure um so goals after all pads i'm kind of lost honestly already um i'm gonna finish up some of the alts that i have going now uh i want to do some completionist task for sure. I still need to get the twisted kits from Chambers. And I don't know, I might just start boosting some of my friends for their pets as well, because I like methods that involve a good amount of accounts. Make a ton of money too. Yeah, for sure. 
So <laughs> although I'm I'm not really struggling with money at the moment. Yeah, I doubt it. Um do you <laughs> so I heard on your like most recent stream, I think, um mm -hmm. that you're not a completionist player. Like you're not like a collection log. No, player. true, true. I would I would probably never go for a collection log. It's close to failed even. It's just gonna take so much time where I don't really see the benefit to the account in that. It's just going to be another RNG grind. It's going to take thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. Um, so what if the... you what if you excluded the clues? Like, oh no, no, it's not even the clues because I really? know the clues are not completable. Yeah, yeah. For so sure. what's the thing it's that's just... like really tough? Oh well, I'm, I mean, I guess it's collection logs. So a lot of things you probably have gotten before, but they're not on the yeah, logs. Yeah, I, I have like a lot of the the PV, PVM ones done, obviously, because I spent most of my hours PVMing post collection log. Oh, true. I'm missing like one item from Chambers. I think it's Kodai. Uh, I have DOB completed. I have Nightmare completed, but just huge hours wise for the log. It's just, I don't know. There's just so much tedious stuff like Gonar Slayer and mm, uh, what true, else is really true, shit. True, Raph true. Caves is fucking terrible now, oh, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for so Irons, I would argue like Rev Caves is almost, if you didn't ever want to deal with the mob at Rev Caves, I think Revs is like great. And I know Juke and I were talking about it. Like, I think. Mm -hmm. I think Revs is great besides just the rate of, like, the weapons, which obviously is collection level. Is it still decent after the update for Irons? I think it's decent because you can't die. Like, if you're good enough at the game, like, if you just know what you're doing and you know how to not die, you will never die at the Rev Caves because it's singles plus, which means there's one person on you. And if that person stops attacking or you ZGS him and walk under him, you're guaranteed a 10 second mm -hmm. uh, pause before anybody else can touch you. And you can just log out. Isn't and, it like lower kills an hour now though after the update? I'm oh really yeah. Sure like it, it, to it, but... it's got to be lower kills per hour. It's just simply because of the hopping that you have to do. But it's like, I mean, I was able to get, I think 80 dragon kills per hour with a crossbow. Do you know how many hours it would take to complete it then or no? So if you're scold, which is, totally viable i just like i've already completed the weapons they're not in my log unfortunately but mm -hmm. um yeah, i don't I definitely not go back for that then. yeah like i don't care yeah. to skull but you can skull because it's so easy just to not die so mm -hmm. eight i think you get like 80 dragons again i don't know if that's people have told me the orcs the most efficient which is faster kills but if i'm just assuming dragons like 80 or 90 and then just to get a weapon or a specific weapons one in 22k i think skulled Okay. so mm -hmm. there's three of them i don't i don't even know how to do the math i'm assuming that's like 200 it's... hours almost i think per weapon then that's pretty, pretty yes. long well yeah i guess but you wouldn't just triple it right for average rate no no, no, no you wouldn't no true yeah so it'd be still, like... i feel like 200 hours for yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty rough but you um even though the supplies have been nerfed to like oblivion there still is at least for irons like those statuettes and stuff like 16 yeah. mil mm -hmm. you, you abuse it right quite a bit oh, when it was yeah. good uh, yeah it's smart yeah it's i will something that new irons yeah. are going to struggle with compared to the ones that are already come to yep. have two pieces yeah, yeah. i that, that's how i feel about the vorkath nerf is like if they ever do nerf vorkath i don't mind nerfs personally i don't mind them because mm -hmm. that might be biased because they just i don't really care like they don't affect me as much but mm -hmm. i would be totally cool with them nerfing like everything and just like well if you didn't abuse it that sucks like i know it sucks for people that didn't abuse revs to have to do it now and same with zora back in the day when it got nerfed but it's like at the same time the game's evolving like there's always new updates that are really good that have been better than anything else and so like nerfs to other things i don't really care about honestly yeah i would agree with that it's just what i don't like to see is nerfs like years after the content was up there uh, it's so annoying. updated you know it's gonna happen just, but it's yeah like, true i i think that there should be like a, a period of time and where nerfs can happen like within the first couple of months maybe when they investigate the content but if you just nerf something three hours after uh so not three hours three years after release you yeah. just fuck over so many people and i feel like the problem that uh, emerged then was probably also a problem on release so i feel like there's no good way of tracking the problems by jagex in that sense I feel like they should react a lot earlier if they feel like it's something is way too powerful and not take years and years to change things. They definitely need to do that. That's how I feel about the chaos altar with um, mm -hmm. just prayer literally being double time. Like it literally. That's insane. That's yeah, insane. It's just stupid. Especially and for irons, right? I like want it. I nuts. want it to be gone. But at this point, that's what it feels like. It feels like it's irreversible. Like you couldn't take it away now because there's already people that have abused it. So it's like, 
I still, but that again, it goes back to like how I feel. I would be totally still cool with them just deleting the chaos altar. People would <laughs> outrage, people would outrage, but I'm just not a player to outrage. I would just be like, thank God it's out bef- better late than never. That's how I feel, especially mm-hmm. now that they're trying to come out with um, these new ashes from like. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't read up too much on it too much, but yeah, I saw it's that. definitely an iron. Is, is that going to be good for there. irons? Yeah, because every single monster you kill now, like every demon, Abyssal Demon, Necreals, uh, Serb, Zami, every single thing is going to drop prayer XP, basically. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a fair point to nerf something else that was really good if they offer some alternative to it that's maybe not as good, but it's going to replace at least some of the yeah. loss. And I feel like this would be the perfect time. Again, there would be a lot of irons that hate me for even mentioning a nerf to the Chaos Altar because they haven't done it yet. But like, I really wish that whole altar was just deleted. It's so stupid. It's so, so stupid. <laughs> like, I hate it so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you probably have a strong opinion on it because you're an Iron Man, and it's yeah. not as much of an issue for main yeah, accounts. Yeah, it's just money that for That BVM, for sure. Maybe for the scalers, for sure, but money is usually not that much of an issue, so prayer becoming a bit cheaper for people is probably not a deal breaker. But if you have to get all the bones yourself, it's going to be huge, of course. Yeah. If something is doubled or not. Yeah, they keep and and they've already pulled a prayer outfit that's gonna pass. That like mm-hmm. it, it already has passed. It's just a matter of yeah, time so. it comes out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, very Iron Man related. I'm pretty sure the Chaos Altar is still the most efficient four mains, though, right? It's just it is. Yeah, I see all of the people that are going for two and I'll all do it at the Chaos yeah. uh, Altar. I well, I guess you can get really... more. You can get more XP an hour in the, in the POH of runners, but it's just so much more expensive that it's just not gonna be worth. Yeah. The extra GP you spend on it. Yeah, it's very OP. Yeah, I just feel like um, they didn't really understand how OP it was when they first... I don't think anybody I, understood. I don't even remember the poll at that time. I don't remember it either. I think that the thought process behind it was just to get more people into the wilderness, Yep. which I think is a fairly bad way of getting people there, honestly. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't like anything that just puts people in their place where they don't want to be. Yeah, I people just people don't want to be in the wilderness. You should make something that makes people want to go there for their own benefit and not for them to become prey for someone else. I don't know. Yep, I completely agree. And I, I've seen a, I think, I think I've seen a bit too much of framed on Twitter. Basically, <laughs> just like, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I saw s- you. Uh, you were pretty outraged about it. I watched <laughs> this video too, and I felt the same way in some way. <laughs> Yeah. He was just, uh, he had a great video addressing a problem that was clearly an issue for yep. a lot of people. And then yep. he followed up with kind of, I feel like how Jagex would think about it as well. Yeah, it's baiting bad. baiting people into going into the wellness that don't actually want to be there. I don't think that's the solution long term for PvP. It isn't. It's, I think it's just it's just going to just gonna benefit him personally because he's a content creator, obviously. And it's going to yep. make it, it benefits for him to anybody provide that's content. Making... Yep. I yeah, exactly. It's going to benefit the people that make videos pretty much. And other than that, I feel like it's a pretty short, short-sighted short solution to the problem. So what are your thoughts on metamorphoses, metamorphoses? Ah, so I pets? already asked that question, right? Yeah. Um, I think we've gotten a lot of metamorphoses over the past maybe year or so. I think I was taking a look at it earlier. We got like Rocky, Tanglerood, and I think Phoenix in the past few months, year maybe. Yeah. And they've all been added without any sort of additional content to obtain the metamorphosis. I think it's kind of becoming to the point where it's going to be hard to differentiate between certain pets because you just don't know which metamorphosis belongs to which pet anymore if you're a bit more of a casual player. Yeah. Uh, I personally don't really care about them as much. I don't really, this is going to sound weird, but I don't really care what pets look like. I don't ever take one out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, so like, bad. I don't really care what they look yeah. like, but. Just I just feel like it's pet. unnecessary to give every single pet a metamorphosis option without any additional content. So you feel like it should have additional content. You think any metamorphosis should have an additional content if it yeah, does have I, a metamorphosis? Yeah, I would say so. But you're not saying yeah. all pets need a metamorphosis, but if they do... No, they definitely should. not. I would I would actually like to see less metamorphosis. That would be my preference. I like the one that uh, you came out with for the Hallowed Sepulchre simply because it came with some good content on the side. It was a pretty good reward, True. I would feel like. Um, the chambers one, I like the metamorphosis. I think that the design of challenge mode is fairly simple and kind of rushed, not that great, but at least it's additional content. So in that sense, I think that it's a pretty good way of introducing a pet metamorphosis. But uh, and the same with the jet one, the six jets we're getting, I think that's awesome for the for the jet we work pet. I think it's awesome. That is too. cool. Yeah, that I really like. But 
if you're just gonna have to use i don't fucking know like a seed on, on a bat yeah 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 just to give it a different color i feel like it's kind of pointless yeah. now i i don't know how i feel because obviously there's dust tons of hours dark acorn tons of hours mm -hmm. like obviously not like tons of hours but like a significant it adds up chunk. quite yeah. a lot yeah and mm -hmm. then there's just use berries or use fire lighters <laughs> yeah yeah the contrast is pretty huge yeah, yeah. I, I agree so i Personally, I haven't really thought about it. I think it's always silly when something just comes out and it's just instant, like the berry mm -hmm. recolor. You don't have to work for it. Yeah. And I feel like all the, of them you should at least work for. True. What about the dark core one, though? Because I know you uh, you had it out on your stream the other day. Yeah. So I'm assuming you like it a lot. Yeah. The, uh, I love my dark core pet. I love the dark core, not the critter version. Oh, really? I thought you had the critter. Oh, never mind. You had the, you had the core out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah same. I like the, the dark core one as well. But... Yeah. I feel like there's no way to have an additional piece of content for Corp to get a metamorphosis in. So. They could have, but like it would have fucked over people that have already completed Corp, like fully completed. Like for me, I got the pet so early that if they come out, like if they had come out with like a die or something from Corp mm -hmm. itself, that could metamorphosize. You would have liked that. Uh, if it was so like a not, it's if not it was like a one in one K a or something. Just at the reasonable rate, okay. Yeah, like I would be okay with that. Like, would I prefer it coming from a different piece of content? Like, sure, if they if it was like a well thought out thing, but there isn't right now. Yeah, it's gonna be hard with Core, but yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be able to think of anything either. Uh, what I did see the other day though is that they're planning on adding a jar to Corb. Oh yeah, <laughs> jar of soon. spirits, right? Yeah, and I know a lot of my collection lock friends were pretty angry about that <laughs> one. It's just they've all. They've all spent like 5,000 kills, 10,000 kills with Corb, and then they come out with a jar that's probably going to be like, I don't know, 1 in 5k maybe as well. Yeah. This is kind of what kind of harsh. So that that is just a suggestion, right? That hasn't been pulled or anything, correct? No, true. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I'm curious yeah, if that'll true. pass or not because they didn't. Okay, what do you think about Jar of Darkness? I know you're not a collection log, Andy, but mm -hmm. like, what do you think of that, that it did, I, that it failed I, the poll? <laughs> that it failed the poll? Uh, I think it's kind of odd. I, thought it was going to pass for sure because it's such a ridiculous drop rate i think it should have passed and even then i think it was still too rare i think it would still take like 100 mil efficient slayer xp to yeah, get it on least, average i think yeah. i think that doesn't make any sense either i think it should have been more in line with the other jars hours wise than it yeah. is right now because i think all of the other ones are pretty attainable except for this one so I, it doesn't make any sense to me even the jar from the grotesque guardians is very rare for some reason yeah one in 5K all the other for ones. some reason yeah, i think it's one in 5K. I, don't, I don't understand why things like that don't like how do i put this that i don't think about it and make yep. it more consistent with the others that doesn't make any sense to me it's like two completely separate teams work on those jars i feel like at jagex it's like they don't at all talk about the other ones and oh just... no like i was talking to mod arcane and he was saying yeah. i was asking okay why is seracna why does seracna shit out clues and it's oh, like a yeah, mid-level boss when like when like other mm -hmm. bosses you know like corp for example one in 200 for an elite like why and nightmare <laughs> right the most recent boss it's like a one in Dude, 200 it's... drop oh i was so gonna want to talk about that i think i i spoke to mod husky on my stream once and asked the same thing about like how can i take like 45 minutes officially as a main yep. to get an elite clue from Seragnus and uh, 15 hours in a team of max efficient people with five bill of void of gear to get that nightmare a much higher like harder boss and it's just I don't it doesn't make any sense it feels like there's no no thought about it yep and they just I say that like whoever whoever's working on that piece of content just decides the drop rates basically and if they're not too busted mm -hmm. they're just like okay like but uh, that go. is too busted yeah it is too busted but like One the team just looks at him like forever eh. And I suggested making it like, I don't know, like one in one in 30 something, maybe. I feel like it would be way more fair considering you'd spend like in a team like two and a half hours or something efficiently to get 30 something kills. Yeah. And I think, I feel like, and I think I now that they've made it so the pet is a different drop rate, I feel like if you're mm -hmm. doing a solo, the, the clue scroll should change like one in six or something. So it still is like a two hour elite clue. Yeah. So if you're going for the pet solo now, you can get. About four elite clue scrolls from the whole grind in 200 hours. Yeah, that is so stupid. It. Oh my gosh. That yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it just, it's so much, so many hours for yeah. no additional gain. And I feel like in general, because of the Bloodhound is pretty rare already, I feel like it wouldn't hurt to add a few extra clues uh, for the people who are interested in that. I don't think adding more clues necessarily hurts because you're not forced to do them if you don't want to do them, yep. I guess. And it doesn't affect 
anything about bots either. Like bots don't do clues. True. Scrolls. They so don't give a fuck, I've yeah. always been an advocate of like, if you want to add like incentive to do anything, just add clue scrolls because it does. It's not like just mm-hmm. shitting GP out where bots benefit. Yeah. No, I I totally agree. So, um. Peba asks, how the how the future will look like for the bossing new PVM content scene. Uh, yeah, and then he also said what Ari Slash said, which, which we just got into the metamorphosis. So what does the future look like for new PVM content and bossing, like the bossing scene or whatever? Um, I don't really know. It's pretty hard to say because we've had almost no PVM updates, I feel like, for the past few years. And the ones that were updated... I've kind of just been meh in no sense. Like we've had Hydra, Gauntlet, and I think Nightmare in the past two years or something since TOD. I feel like they've all been somewhat disappointing. If you would agree with that, I don't know. Uh, I think Nightmare is disappointing, but like. What about Hydra? Hydra's disappointing as well, but um, no, it's it's disappointing. And it, <laughs> in fact, like I have so many complaints about Hydra. It's like I just I put it out of my mind because it's just. It bothers me so much. The whole thing just bothers me. The- I like what they did to Gauntlet with the counting mechanic, and I feel like they would have easily been able to just do the same thing to Hydra, and it would fix a lot of the issues. Yeah, because people I don't... just hate counting. The what counting were, mechanic is so What shit. was their excuse for not doing it? Because everyone's like, can you please do this to Hydra? And then like, oh, hi- this is the only thing that Hydra has going for it, so we're going to keep it. Like, <laughs> just, just delete it. Like, seriously, if you just added like a little, a-, a little chain, like a little like animation even mm-hmm. like a even like a tick or two before it changes so it still is skill based you still kind of have to focus it's like that would have been perfect yeah um for the future though i don't know it's hard to say because i haven't really seen many uh in the year ahead they posted many pvm updates i think it's looking pretty pretty dark for the higher level pvm community honestly like we haven't had like a big piece of content <laughs> excuse me for the voice crack yes. uh we haven't had a big piece of content in a long time i feel like the last huge piece of content that was a success was tob in 2018 yep. and, TOB is and i see a lot of people around me quitting because there's just nothing to do in the game for them if they don't want to hunt pets yeah and uh i feel like at least this is how i kind of see night i see nightmare is just this weird filler content that was yeah, just supposed absolutely. to be like they didn't yeah. plan to do raids three for so long that they just released nightmare and just made the rates ridiculous just to keep people occupied yeah yeah i got you i feel you on that for sure i think the same way in in a lesser way though about the uh, achievement diaries the combat ones i really like them i think it's a great idea but i feel like it's it's just filler. like it's filling yeah it's filling time until they can actually do a really big update and i don't really see what's stopping them because they're pushing out a lot of content and I feel like if they just scrapped one or two ideas from the math pieces of content, they just put that towards a bigger piece of content that would take a bit longer. You'd yeah. satisfy a lot more people, in my opinion. But yeah, I, I don't see... know what the thought process is behind that. Yeah, I see the roadmap that they have, and it, it really does look extremely full. It's kind of like you could kind of cut back a little bit and put put a little bit more time on Raids 3 or something coming out. Yeah, exactly. Or like um, just a high-level boss in general that has been through a lot of time. I don't know. I feel like the the content that they have planned for the next year is just going to be another year of just filling up time until they can actually do something big. Yeah. I know they're working on Group Iron Man and the clan system, but I don't know how popular those things are going to be or like how much time are they are really going to kill with that. I feel like a lot of people that I know at least are not really that interested in Group Iron Man. I'm not sure how your Iron Man friends think about it. Yeah, I don't... Most of my friends are not... Uh... Look, I mean, I don't know. They don't really talk about group Iron Man. I think it'll be all right. There's <laughs> people... I think that's the problem. If people yeah. aren't talking about it yeah. now, I think no. it's also just, just as... taken so long since I announced it. People have <laughs> yeah. just stopped talking about it. It's as like... soon as it was announced, it kind of made everyone just chill and nobody talks about it anymore. It's like yeah. just simply the fact that they've like responded to us. They're like, okay, like we're good now. We're doing but, it. Yeah. Yeah. It was bad though. Like before they ever announced it, that's all anybody would ever talk I about. I know. I, I didn't really understand it then either. Yep. Like, I don't. I'm personally not a not that interested and maybe i would do it with a couple of friends just for fun for a while but i, I can't see myself sticking to that for a couple of years yeah no it's the thing that makes it really bad is everything's more efficient solo yeah exactly like, uh-huh. you would rather have four people doing solo bosses rather than have like three of them like helping mm-hmm. one guy out it makes no sense yeah true so but i feel like a lot of a lot of the more casual people are going to really enjoy it and it's going to be good content for twitch as well so 
that's the scary thing though is like is like casuals that don't stream it's like dude the people quit all the time like somebody's gonna yoink all your shit in real world yeah yeah for sure it's gonna it's gonna cause a lot of problems oh, for sure. Yeah. But oh, uh, yeah. I'm I'm happy I'm not the one who has to deal with that. <laughs> I know. So what do you think about the clan system update uh, as well? So are you are you in? A, I mean, I'm assuming you're in Oblivion, right? Yeah, I'm in Oblivion. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't really interact with the clan that much, uh, so I'm not really super excited for any kind of clan system. But I think that the the clan system should definitely be updated. We have very limited features on on the friends chat at the moment. I would like to see an extensive clan update, and I definitely be fine if i spend a lot of time on that just like a little bit longer just to make sure it's actually good instead of just rushing it yeah no i feel i'm like i'm excited for it i don't know all that they're adding to it but i feel like anything to incentivize um joining Joining a clan yeah Mm -hmm. because like clans are great uh i feel like i'm a little bit more of a solo type player i'm not like super active in my clan and what kind are you in i'm in olympus okay yeah so I have, um, like, obviously I have my stream, which is like, I feel like that's my close community that I'm involved with rather than, um, like Olympus. I like, I'm still active semi, but like, I never really participate in any bingos or anything. I just kind of do my same, own thing. Yeah. I'm exactly the same way with the yeah. Oblivion. Yep. Yeah. I don't uh, know if it's the same with you, but I just, I'm just so focused on my own account progression. I feel like anything that takes away from that is just not worth it. Yep. That's how I feel. Okay. I've never, I've never even been big into like the bingos and other things like that. Like I've, uh, there's been skilling competitions like years ago that I would go and do. And like, I think there's only one that ever stood out to me where I actually tried, but it's because it directly benefited my account. But like, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I never have motivation to do bingos or anything. I'm just like, and that's why I see that the, uh, when the scaling clans do competitions, they're always huge. Like people always, uh, it's a lot of people competing in that. Whereas I think a lot of people in like the PVM world just kind of hold back because they don't want to kill like, I don't know, thermonuclear, thermonuclear <laughs> smoke devil when I've already had to pass from that place and spend hours and hours there just to get, yeah. I don't know, a dumb drop. Yeah. But I do feel like just clans in general, regardless of like, if you're active or not, like it makes you feel a part of something and like because i wasn't in a clan for the first couple of years i played uh old school as a main or i guess like a year and a half i was a main account and like i wasn't involved in any clans or anything mm-hmm. i just did my own thing but like being involved in a clan and even i'm i'm a big fan of like ranking systems as well i love to see kind of where you're ranked hours wise yeah and stuff same same yeah. Like I, I love that and that's the reason that's the biggest reason i love olympus is because they have a very very balanced very mathematic ranking system where it's like it's all hours based and they include things that other clans would never include like they include clue hours uh skilling they've completely like torn apart every single pvm and seen like how much gold you make how much supplies you make and then they've made like um an effective pvm uh what's it like ehb they've made mm-hmm. it like an effective rate so like if you kill vorkath if you killed thirty thousand vorkath it counts as zero ehb like because that is <laughs> efficient that's like that's like already efficient for skilling you know like every that's single f- that's, that, yeah, that's kind of skilling okay yeah, yeah I got like you. And, mm-hmm. like and this is for irons of course mm-hmm. so but that's the thing i love about it is because it shows you, okay, this boss is actually perfectly efficient to do. So you're getting no additional benefit. So if somebody were to do 30,000 more cap, it's not like, oh, they have 30,000, you know, of however many hours that would be, you know, let's just say a thousand hours or something mm-hmm. of, well, I don't even know how many kills you get of work. I think it's 30. Yeah, let's it's about say, 30 kills an hour, yeah, yeah, let's say you have a thousand mm-hmm. hours there. And then you additionally have all the shit bank that's just like free EHP basically. So it's yeah. like mm-hmm. they've... I love the way they've done it and they've torn apart every single boss. Like even Seracnus, I think Seracnus, with how much supplies it drops, it would normally be like 55 kills an hour. But I think it's like 180 or something to actually get an efficient hour just because of all the supplies you get. It's crazy. I got you. Yeah. I think that's awesome, honestly. I think that is better than the system that we use in Oblivion where it's mostly RNG dependent. You have to submit every single drop you get to get points for rank ups. Mm. 
Uh, and it's obviously way more RNG dependent than just breaking down all the hours. So I think that's an awesome system they have going. I've kind of advocated for something similar in Oblivion where they would count EGB rather than drops they've gotten, but I'm not sure how far they are with that. They combine them, right? Like the, the drops yeah. and the hours? I think that's No, not solid. the hours. Oh, they don't no, even touch hours. hours. No, nope. Really? Hours are not included at all, yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so Solitary did a mixture of item points and hours. Olympus doesn't do anything with items, which I kind of, like, I'm happy with, but I kind of loved the, like, marking off the little spreadsheet with all the items you got, and you're like, <laughs> ooh, I, like, I'm cool, you know, like, I got all these items. But, I like, think hours is a great incentive, honestly. It's it is. Just... It's the best incentive. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I don't know. I, I like being a part of Oblivion, though, but it's not like you need to be a part of any kind of clan in this game to have a good account, and I feel like anything to incentivize joining one and building a community is uh, it's going to be helpful for the game in the long run. Yep. So, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the clan system, although I don't really do much with the clan as of right now. It's probably just a short answer in summary. Yeah, and I don't, I don't really know all that they're coming out with, but I am excited just to see mm -hmm. more in-depth things. Like, what are your thoughts on the little... Uh, all, like what are your thoughts on the setting bar just getting changed and stuff i think it personally looks pretty clean uh, i kind of wish that i didn't have to open up a huge screen because i play on fixed when i don't really <laughs> oh, like a huge you play screen on fixed like resized like to uh yeah stretch like stretch it. stretch fix oh mode, yeah. dude no <laughs> yes yes I, I was playing fixed just the normal fixed at the smallest size you can't can't do Mostly i can't because do normal it's fixed the... I don't know, I guess just got used to it because I have to have like a good amount of clients open for a lot of the things that's I do. That's true, that's true. Yeah, and then I just stuck to it even if I just play one account. I just like how it looks, especially in screenshots. Fix just looks so much cleaner than like a huge, resizable screenshot in my opinion. Yeah, no, resizable looks bad. Like yeah. my stretched fix, like I love it because everything, and I feel like you could say the same thing. Like if you're doing like high level PVM, every single thing, like all your prayers are in the exact same position as they always happen. Yeah. So like if you mm -hmm. kept resizing it, it's like you have to move your mouse slightly more, or slightly less. Like I love fix. It's just always same. exact ratios. I, I, what I also like about fix is that your character is just in the middle of the screen. Whereas if you turn on resizable, you don't actually like stretch it. Your character is yeah. like way closer to the inventory <laughs> yeah. than it is to the other side of the screen. And it just kind of, kind of annoys me in some way. Yeah, it bothers me. So I don't know. I don't really play in resizable often at all. Uh, I did it for the Inferno because I just liked that you could see more for Inferno. But other than that, I usually stick to my uh, my fixed. But that wasn't even the question, was it? It was the interface thing. Um, I, I think it looks really clean. The only thing that I don't like about it is that I have to click on all settings to go from fixed to resizable. I think that can be quite annoying. But other than that, I, I'm actually a big fan of it. It looks really nice. Oh, you don't have to, actually. Do you not? Yeah, there's a I new option now. I just, I'm, I'm looking at the little... There's the third option can go from fixed to resizable. The third that's, option. That's classic. Let me oh, I see it now. Oh, Jesus holy. Christ. What did this do? Never that's mind. Like... I didn't say anything then. In that case, I, I just like it. No comment on that other than. I think they just changed. Like, I think they've been like making little updates. And they also added the volume scroll bar. I see that now. Yeah. No, that, in that case, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the update. Yeah. It just didn't really bother me before. Uh, but I think it looks a bit cleaner now, so. Yeah, and I feel like the clan system is going to have a similar, just big settings option for clans, and it's just going to be, like, very, like, organized. And I am i don't know. I'm excited for it. I Again, I don't know exactly all they're adding, but. Yeah, same. I think they were supposed to have, like, a player visit for it, too, that got canceled because of the, the virus, obviously. So I, we haven't really heard anything of it since then, I think. Like, we have had no screenshots or anything like yep. that shown from the clan system. I would like to see that if they're still working on it avidly. Okay, so I'm going to go to your thread. Um, yeah, let me see what's if, up. If you have any topics you'd like to bring up that pop out to you, go ahead. Uh-huh. Let's see. The Archaeus Spellbook rework, someone says. What do you think about that? So I'm a fan. There's a lot of just weird stuff, like, resurrection stuff is kind of silly especially because you already know their agenda it's like they they're saying oh it's only going to affect kabos and current or whatever mm -hmm. um like it's not it's it's eventually going to spread to the entire game you're just doing that so it doesn't look too intimidating yeah like yeah, you sure. just you know they're doing <laughs> like that's the reason they're doing it because 
like i don't know but what do you but think is there, any, is there anything useful in there for you right now that you think oh i'm gonna use that right on release or? yes so what the main thing is what was it called i can't even remember what the spell is called but it's the 15 percent thieving buff oh that right is, right is that gonna be good for the, the blood fury so it's great for the blood fury which i don't care about anymore because it's just too many hours and after i'm done with nightmare i, I won't even care about using them mm -hmm. but it's amazing for crystal shards and i need thousands and thousands and thousands of crystal shards for super combats in the future divines all right mm -hmm. and i need a bunch for opening all my crystal keys eventually to get the full dragonstone armor like, yeah see i think that's actually a great update it's kind of balanced i feel like and just doesn't really hurt anyone i like yeah. that update as well and it makes players that are gonna not because i'm assuming people would also use it at gem nights or something but the mm -hmm. fact that it takes extra effort makes it so some people just might not do it just Simply yeah, they're probably that minute maybe effort. long term it won't be efficient to actually do go and do that. Oh, <laughs> I keep yeah. voice cracking. Yeah, no, like I think it will be efficient actually, but you know if that's what you do zero time, like just away from your computer, mm -hmm. then it's just gonna be a, just a huge annoyance. So people probably won't do it. True. When I first read the blog, I was kind of shocked by that that charge they put on. I think they worded it horribly originally. It was it was worded to the point where if you killed any Slayer monster, it would give you fifteen percent spec back constantly. Oh, yeah. So what was the change they made to it then? Yeah, so I'll, I'll say that right now. So they changed it, I think, today or yesterday to um, where it only counts for the first monster you kill, and then you're on the cooldown for like the rest of the sixty seconds. So, so you only just if you kill one. So you yeah, just you get do once. the spell, and then as soon as the monster's done, like the spell's done, and then it has the cooldown. It's like a minute, yeah, right? Exactly. But how it was worded originally, it was gonna completely change the slayer meta i think yeah. for efficient slayer you oh, could probably yeah. just bulwark everything constantly constant <laughs> yeah, you really good so if you're main because even if you did run out you could just have an alt like yeah, run spec transfer. Yep. yeah so that would be absolutely nuts i think everyone was kind of shocked when that first got released and then they they quickly changed that uh, thank god I mean, you know that they initially planned to have it like that, but as soon as Maybe, people outrage, yeah, I was as soon as thing. people outrage, they're like, "Show we have to change it." Yeah, yeah, you never really know it, Ed, but yeah. I wow, mean, that would have been so nuts. I yeah, like you got to think about it. Like, I think it's cool for them to add new metas like that. Obviously, I have no idea the just how big of a buff that would have actually been. Mm -hmm. I just saw it as from an Iron Man perspective, like, oh, this could make bulwarking slightly more viable compared, like, I was comparing it to magic, where, like, every single thing is, do Ice Barrage, Ice Barrage this, Ice Barrage this, so I felt like they were just trying to shift melee into that area, mm -hmm. where melee could actually be just as good for irons, that and I was cool. only thinking of it with an iron mindset. I think that would be cool, but I think that, in this case, the melee method would have just completely trumped the magic method, like big time. Uh, you could probably just like constantly bulwark spec, Calphites, uh, Necreals as well, probably, Dagonauts. Yeah. I think it would be very, very powerful if they came out with it the way it was originally worded. No, it definitely would have. Um, I'm just trying to think if they could have balanced it so it still does do each monster kill, but it only does like 5% instead of 15%. Um, because yeah, I'm I think not sure how good that would be. Yeah, like I, I don't know fully how to balance it. Like we would literally need players to test it and stuff to make sure it's balanced. But <laughs> like I think about it as okay, you have 600 mil melee XP to get and only 200 mil magic mm -hmm. to ever get. So it's like I feel like they're just trying to shift it. So it's like, it's, yeah, I don't think that would be bad. I think yeah. it would be great if it was just roughly the same, maybe slightly better. Yeah, uh, to incentivize that, I'd, I'd be okay with that. But if it's just like 50 percent better then it's just mm, yeah and i also of, uh, kind of i also buff. i also think it should take a lot of like magic runes to cast the spell in the first place because obviously magic is costing a lot of money to mm -hmm. to fund all the runes so if the spell itself costs like a shit ton of runes just to get that benefit it's like okay then it's like at least costing you something because melee just generally is free and magic costs a lot so Again, yeah, looking absolutely. at it as an iron mindset. There's iron methods where you bulwark, right? Like the, yeah, the Dagonauts, Dagonauts, maybe? Yep. Yeah. You see, that would be very, very good with that spell. I've uh, seen insane. irons, even see Halley, Necreals. They, like, they just run, to, like, they spec three times, and then they personally go back to their POH pool, and then they have Is an all lure them. It's like... It, I've well, seen it it's from not, mains where they spec transfer it all yeah, the time, yeah. but I'm not sure how good it is It's not irons. better, but it's, like, really good strength uh -huh. xp or something like that like i've seen like two videos on it 
Yeah, I'm not sure if it's worth like the sacrifice of Slayer XP for melee XP. Yeah. I'm not really up to speed with the Iron Slayer meta, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I don't know what main... Do, do mains even get any EHP for melees? Because I know mm, irons um, do. I, yeah, they do. You just don't get any EHP for, I think, hit points and magic. But for the, yeah. all the other ones, you do. Okay. Okay. It's not completely zero time to get 200 million melees. No. Yeah. I would, th- I would think it's cool, though, to have like a bit of variety in Slayer because you do barrage a fuck ton as a main, at least. Uh, every catacomb task is just barrage, barrage, smoke devils barraging. It'd be yeah. cool to see a little bit of a switch up in that, but not if it's way, way much better. Yeah, so I'm just trying to think like a 15% every minute. So on average, you would get... Uh, so multiply that by 5, so 75. So every time you would get a full spec bar, you're actually getting... 175 percent spec is that right like if you were to cast that spell every minute yeah that's right it sounds right yeah so sounds right mm-hmm. so that's like i think that wouldn't be op at all yeah I feel like no it's... that's that's fine I especially just... in the task where you already don't use any spells such as uh, diagonals for irons i think you don't use any magic right at all yeah i don't think so yeah so you you can be on that spell book and just have a slight buff to what you were getting before i don't think that necessarily is such a big issue I also that's a nice niche. Yeah, no. I also think uh, just in general, them kind of wanting people to be on the Arcade spell because right now the Arcade spell because is dog shit. Like you <laughs> never, useless, never yeah. on it. And I think it's cool. Like with the new demonic ashes, you can be on that spell. So you can literally cast the ensouled head spell like during Slayer. Like if you were mm-hmm. doing like a melee attack, you can just cast it right there, and then um, you can also cast the spell to convert the three ashes or whatever into prayer xp like during the task because i don't think they're making it like uh what's that thing called the soul bearer where you can just transfer it to your bank i don't think oh, anything's gonna dude, i don't even have that item honestly <laughs> I, I don't even know what the fuck that does. I, I don't think it's worth it for me yeah no all. no it's it's barely even worth it for like me because you rarely ever get a task where you actually fill up your entire inventory uh-huh. with heads but I'm just, I don't think Ash will ever stack. So you actually have to like either use it or just do more banking trips. So it's probably going to be worth it though. Oh, yeah. No, for irons, like just the prayer XP, the extra prayer XP, it's mm-hmm. like, completely worth it. Is that something you're still going for, like extra XP? Yeah. You do, you do some scaling, but how do you balance that between like going for the items, to the RNG goals you have, and then the scaling goals? What's your mindset on that? So I do a lot of scaling off stream. Um, I am like a overall balanced player. Like I love like pretty much all aspects of the game and I love going for XP as well. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously my main focus is clues, just get the maze and go to clues. But eventually at some future time, I would love to like clear out all my banked XP, especially after Seracnus. I'm going to have basically 200 mil prayer and 200 mil crafting just banked, which I would love to use it's not just i'm not just a stack resource andy uh i think that's Cur- crazy as an iron man to get those done That'd be oh huge. it's insane like i was watching uh-huh. curtis's video mmorpg his, I bank, saw his video. bank video yeah it's fucking insane yep and he was even talking about he doesn't have any plans of going for xp goals mm-hmm. at least that's what i think i recall him saying and like that's not me i'm like i'm an item completionist and everything completionist player but i'm also xp completionist like i would love to eventually maximize like all my stats so after after i do seracnus i've already calculated it i'm gonna get 200 mil in all melees after that like before that even before i'm done with 300,000 seracnus i'll be you're, you're getting somewhat close to 200 mil strength i, I think, yeah right? 140 like, mil right now. yeah yeah you got a fuck ton of melee xp from just bbming if you're not just going for scaling for sure yep so my whole thing is I don't really want to keep killing shit after I'm 200 mil in every single melee. Like I mm. kind of want to move on to some other skills, but those you probably have to still. There's always going to be new PVM content that you're yeah, gonna. Yeah, no, I'm always gonna, gonna have to, have to do stuff. to complete some of your item goals. <laughs> yeah. Surely, I just you're really done with that. I really want other skills to get like some sort of clue update because thing is, I it's not just complete elites and be done. I also have to complete masters, which is more elites basically. Like I want to complete the mm-hmm. Anku outfit eventually, the mummy outfit. And those things take a lot of clues. And I yeah, really sure. don't want to just keep killing shit for clues. I want to, I want some other method from it. Mm-hmm. 
Nah, I've had the same. I've been doing my strength for a couple months now, maybe four or five months. And it's just like every time you swing the side, you don't get XP. It's kind of kind of yeah. hurts. I don't know. I like getting the experience from that. I'm yeah. not a skiller, but I still like seeing that XP go up. And I just quote unquote waste so much XP over the past few months yep. just siding. And I I, I don't want to side on attack because you lose a max hit. I'm just kind of a stickler to that. Yep. And Even nightmare, you couldn't. You had to do it on strength. Yeah. Yeah. You had to do strength. I got 85 mil strength just from nightmare. Jesus. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a skiller, but I still like to see that number go up. Yeah. So I feel you on that. I guess if you don't really care that much about the max hit, you can always uh, put it on attack or defense in the future if the content doesn't require it to be on strength. Yeah, no, that's how, that's like one of the real big benefits of getting the mace is because they have all three attack styles. Yeah, that's awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you say you don't go for XP. Do you have any plan of doing any sort of XP goal after all pets, which could be uh... any day now? I don't really know, honestly. I have done quite a bit. I have like 1.3 built total XP right now. I got 200 mil farming and strength. Just kind of passively got that, obviously. Not that impressive. But I don't know. I don't think I want to go for XP goals because I'm like an all or nothing kind of player. It's like either mm -hmm. I go for all of them to 200 mil or none. I don't know. It feels like spending a couple thousand hours to get like not even halfway to 200 mil. It doesn't just seem worth it to me. So probably not. But I like scaling pre-99 a lot. So I maxed my alts before I even went pet hunting. And I don't know, maybe I'll just fuck around with the alts a bit and scale on those. But I don't think I'll ever go for 4.6 build total XP. I just, I don't know. I don't really want that in my account, personally. I feel you. So question What is, I'm trying to even find this question because I remember looking at it. Maybe it's on, <laughs> maybe it's on my thread. But uh, let me just go back. It was basically a question was saying like, what's like the differences between Iron Man and main, especially with how close they've like collided over the past few years. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I was thinking about this earlier as well, that uh, there are not that many more hours to max nowadays. I think it's like a couple hundred hours at most more that you have to spend on maxing an Iron Man than a main account. I think nowadays it would take less time to max an iron and it would take a main on release of the game. Just kind of crazy to think about if you if you think about it. But I don't know. I think that the the amount of the the nature of the goals that Iron Man have are totally different than main accounts. At least for the high level people, I think that two ML all isn't super viable for irons, and I see a lot of mains completing it. I know someday an iron is going to complete it too, of course, but. Uh, I think that the nature of goals is very different, but I think that the <laughs> the difference has kind of been diminishing for the past few years with every update we get. Yep. I and think it kind of has been devalued in some way, Yeah, no, the game I, mode that is. I feel you. And like I know Iron Man, Iron Man gets closer to mains, but the collection log made mains closer to irons. So like mm -hmm. we're, we're just getting closer and closer and closer to like basically there being little like very little difference um yeah no i feel you and i think collection log was a great update because i feel like mains at the time really all they had was xp and pets mm -hmm. and now obviously you can't just show it off in game you can't just be like hey look at my collection log in game like or i guess you could go to their house and see it but like yeah i know what you mean yeah there's no in game yeah. way to check for other people i got you yeah yeah so um but i do really like that they came out with the collection log sucks that it wasn't retroactive yeah i think that's my biggest issue with it i feel like it would have been so nice to have everything you've yeah. ever done on the account but i think i think it's still a good update even if it came late yeah especially there's going to be a lot of people that are coming into the game now that just have just started pvming exactly. and they're going to have such a big benefit of that collection log would, so i think it's a great update would it have been unfair if if iron men could have used items on the collection log no no Why you don't think that? it would have been fair I don't. No, I don't agree. Fair. It would have. It would have been fair. Oh, you you agree? It would have yeah, been yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would okay. have been fine if all the items showed up on the iron logs. Why not? Because it's quite I, obvious that they got it themselves. So what's the yeah, point yeah, of yeah, not yeah. being able to use it? Yeah. So I felt and there's no like, competition. I felt like it was the reason they didn't do it. Like they had the weird. I think it was Mod Rock. He had just the weirdest explanation for why they didn't do that. There was he was saying like, oh well, there's some items that some people got illegally or like i don't know if he said illegally, it doesn't make just, any sense it made no <laughs> sense i was like just admit that like you wanted it it's to be a fair effort. competition and it, it probably wouldn't have even been too much effort i think it was just the fact that they wanted to make it a clean slate because if if a main 
had to do everything from scratch over and an iron man yeah, already had I all the stuff it. like i, I feel like it was it. all about competition mm. I, don't, I don't i don't know if jarek's necessarily thinks about competition between players let alone between game modes yeah like, i mean who knows but i just didn't see any other reason besides just making it fair for mains because i know i'm at the time, obviously it doesn't mean much now just because it's been out for so long, but like at the time, if they had let Irons just fill out a shit ton of spots already with mains not like not being able to do it, there would have been mm -hmm. outrage, I feel like. Yeah, I mean Personally, I think I the competition in general doesn't really exist between mains and Iron Man when it comes to collection lock, honestly, because mains can do everything so much faster by speed, uh, speeding up kills with all. So I think in general the the playing field wouldn't be the same. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that the collection lock has any kind of competition between the two game modes myself. But you never know how Jagex looks at it. Yeah. No idea. Uh, what I do like about Iron Man mode a lot, though, is the scaling part of it. Not so much the PVMing, but the scaling is something that appeals way more to me than the PVMing. It's just I really like the farming and herbor skill as an Iron Man yep, getting compared everything. to what it is as a main. Yeah, it's not even. It's never worth it to just farm herbs on a main, is it ever? Never. No, actually, <laughs> people would do that. Just kind of get made fun of. <laughs> I know. It's, <laughs> it's just like, why would you go all the way to a herb patch to make like fifty or hundred k? And sense. now, like, it's so it's so different because if you don't farm herbs, you're made fun of on an Iron Man. Yeah, no, so, of course, it's very efficient yeah. to do, and I, I like that. Like, you have to uh, gather your own resources in that way. Um, what I don't like about Iron Man is the kind of slow paced pvming not out not hours wise but just let's say you're going to zami you just there by yourself kind of just half afking it and it's just i don't know it just doesn't interest me as much yeah no, I... i'm like used to what the what the methods are for the main accounts where you have a lot of alls in there you use multiple people sometimes and it's just very fast paced i definitely agree i think mains have a way more diverse uh experience with pvm now you could argue some people could argue it's like it takes less effort because you can just camp there, never have to prayer flick and just have a bunch of counts like mm -hmm. just attacking it and then the boss dies instantly. Yeah, but, that's certainly a sense of truth. Yeah, opinion. but I, I personally agree or I personally think it takes more effort for a main to efficiently like kill stuff. Like I think the Zami method where like you're hopping after every kill and you have to use mm -hmm. like another player to like um, coordinate it. I think that takes so much more effort than just efficiently flicking Zami on it. Yeah, that's what I really like about main PVM compared to Iron Man PVM. Because in a sense, uh, I don't want to say I play like an Iron Man because I don't, but you're going for an untradeable drop just like Iron Man would go for their chest blade or whatever. So in that sense, I think that <laughs> it's not that different going for like untradeable drops for both game modes. I just think that the methods are a lot more advanced for main accounts and more interesting to go for. Speaking of God Wars, what are your thoughts on them uh, separating the two places for irons and mains? As a, um, as a quote unquote, um, what do they call it? Integrity Some, change. Probably? Integrity change. There you go. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't see much of an issue with it. I was I was against it at first because eh, are you man getting easier skate? But the more I thought about it, it didn't really make sense not to do it. Honestly, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't influence yeah. anything I do. And if so many people are finding so many issues with it, then why not give them what they want? Uh, I heard a couple of people saying that it was actually impossible for some for Iron Man to find worlds at certain points in the day. It actually is, which is like I never know because I've already done basically all my God Wars, and the only thing I have left is like an armor hilt, and obviously pets. no. Same actually, I only need an armor hilt to complete the God Wars lock. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I think I think because I would love to eventually go for all pets, and Bandos is so much fun. The thing that makes Bandos so irritating, though, is just how packed it is. But not even if I could find a world, it's never a good like my like my favorite ping worlds where it's like okay, this mm -hmm. world's very consistent because that's the only time you can efficiently flick. If you're on some random ass world, like you have to like you're like sweating because you just know at any point it's gonna lag for like half a second. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And any second, you could get crashed very yeah. easily. I mean, so, I'm guilty of myself. I've crashed tons of Iron Man. You have to. It's, a, it's the same thing yeah, with me in Nightmare. I have to crash people. I'm sorry. Like, I'm I'm not going to spend more time. So I totally understand yeah, exactly. the mindset. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not that I hate them. It's just so much more beneficial to me. Yeah, no, it just... Uh, and I don't exist. Safe. and just... Yep. Yeah, I know. 
Some, I remember one time though, I crashed an Iron Man, he came back on the main and just started clawing my boss the whole time. <laughs> I just, then he sniped an item too, I remember that. Oh, Jeez, that's painful. Worst moment. You have to just worse. like basically tell me out or just like, yeah. or just like so not say, oh dude, yeah, yeah, it's bad. I remember a time in 2015, I was killing KBD and I, I was 99 ranged and I remember hopping to a world and the guy was like 80 and I just looked them up on OS Buddy. I looked him up and I was like, yeah, I can just crash this guy. And this guy was so pissed. And he sniped a visage from me. And at the time, it was like 15 mil or something. And that was so much money to me. I was so yeah, fucking yeah, embarrassed. Sure. I just tellied out. Like, I just, <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was like, this is so bad. It's so tragic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. What was the topic again? Just. I think we completely drifted away from God what Wars it was Dungeon about. instances. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. No. So in general, I would say that. Uh, I'm now in favor of it. I think originally I, I said no to it, but honestly, it doesn't influence my gameplay at all. And if so many people are finding issue with that, then why not just change it for them? Yeah. And I think it very much devalues the items in it really the grand doesn't. scheme of things. Especially no. when you think of how many, in, like think of TOB, the whole place is instanced. Like mm -hmm. there's probably, I don't even know. It's hard to tell really how many players are uh, interacting with a piece of content. Like at yeah, a player's sure. perspective, it's it's hard for me to tell like how many players are actually doing it. But Chambers and Tob are both fully instanced, heavily camped, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and heavily camped, especially Chambers nowadays. Everybody yeah, it's does. not even that like the iron. Um, sorry, the uh, items are gonna crash because of it. It's just more like I was thinking uh, along the lines of that it would devalue the items for Iron Man themselves, mm. not so much the price of the items as a main account because. There's like has to be tens of thousands of banners chess plates in the game. Like a couple more from Iron Man aren't gonna yeah gonna make any kind of difference. But I don't know. Don't you think it devalues the items? I uh, personally don't. But I don't think so. Like I don't think just factoring in. Oh, this man had a world hop five hundred <laughs> times. Like it really does anything. It just makes just makes the game nicer. Like it's the same thing with um, Nightmare. Like when it's when it gets really packed, I understand it's an MMO. I understand the argument where it's like, oh, if it's packed, don't do it. Do something else. But it's like this is RuneScape. We're talking like thousands and thousands of hours for like cer certain pieces of content to complete, and mm -hmm. it's like if you can't do it, it's just awkward. And so they initially had an Iron Man portal that was irons only. Like I think if they brought back that, it would benefit everybody. Um, for what? If they brought back the for Iron Nightmare. Man. Yeah, for, ni for Nightmare. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I never remembered Iron Man struggling to find teams or something along the line. That's why they changed it. Is yeah, correct, because it was so yeah. dead, like, two weeks after release. They just changed it. And so I agree, like, it would be cool for Irons to go to mains. But if they were separated, not only does it benefit Irons, but it also benefits mains. Because now mains don't have to get crashed by Irons. Like, you know, it just Yeah, for gives. sure. And their whole argument, I swear, is just economy. There's going to be too many items coming into the game. It's like, <laughs> do you understand how, like, well, first of all, the items are so niche anyway. I don't even think they should be as expensive as they are already. But, like, the fact that Nightmare is the best moneymaker for normal PVMers makes that, like, it makes the items expensive. I don't even think any of the items are that amazing. Like, Harmonized Orbs all obviously great for a main because it's best in slot. Mm -hmm. But, like, for irons it's trash because you have to do so much fucking winter todd but like uh, it's not very viable to use it long term yeah. to harmonize yeah. that's kind of a shame i don't know i personally don't think winter todd is a very great piece of content so oh. forcing people that have a harmonized orb to do it for so long and then i think even if you get 200 mil you can't very last very long with the staff yeah isn't like, that true somebody said it was 400k charges if you did two it, one, zero to two on earth i guess level 50 to 200 mil fire making you would only get 400k charges yeah that's not even that much yeah that's like the equivalent for the of, amount of hours you have to put in at least yeah. that's not that much it's yeah. like 400k zora scales for a trident for your life mm -hmm. so uh, what do you feel about devaluement in general do you feel like if pieces of content get changed maybe like uh, after you've done it do you feel like your achievement has been devalued in general or do yeah. you not care at all i do feel that way but i only feel it I think most players feel it, but only when it directly affects them. For example, uh -huh. if I did 5,000 elites and then all of a sudden, six months later, they say, oh, we're going to up the rate of third age because it's fucked. And now we realized it. And now we're going to make a change. I'd be so pissed because I of all that it, time yeah. I, I lost. And I feel the same way. Like I, 
I empathize with people that, you know, did, you know, any sort of skilling method and then something else comes out or where it's just, wow, okay, so. I don't know. I feel like I have a different point of view on that. I was just kind of relating it to uh, to my Nightman grind. I think if they changed the pat rate today to something that was much lower than it, than it was when I did it, I would be happy with that. I'll be fine if they just drop the pat rate by a while because I don't think it devalues my achievement because I know what I did to get it. Like the, those hours mean yeah. something to me, but I no. don't think everyone else has to suffer just because I did in the past. Yeah. I would still be an advocate to, uh, for changing the pat rate to something slightly lower. See, I'm I totally agree with you on certain things. Like for example, there's been really AIDS things I've had to do in the past. I do not want other people to suffer. I would just rather they make changes and stuff like if if they're going to just change things be transparent about a change or something so it's not just you know like they were talking about doing a nightmare change or it's not just like you got your pet day later you know let's change the rate <laughs> just like wow could uh, you have like informed me like yeah yeah before I know, I know what you feel yeah and they they don't say any okay so i have i'm very passionate about clue scrolls obviously and i'm mm. bothered by the fact that Getting a piece of third age from a hard clue is one in 3,250. But getting a third age from an elite clue, which has more roles, has three more roles for third age, is one in 5,750. Yeah, it doesn't make... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like literally 2,500 more elites just to see a piece of third age that has more pieces That's of third insane. age on it. It's so yeah. stupid. And so I feel like they're going to change it eventually. But there's no talk of it. There's no plan to do it. Nobody seems to care. I just feel like as soon as I'm done with the elite clue, then they'll change it. Be like, oh, well. I don't know, honestly. Like, yeah. third age has been something that's been in the game for so long. Even before Old School Runescape was a thing, I feel like I don't think they're ever gonna touch the drop rates for that, honestly. But you you never know, like you said, you can't really plan around that. I yeah. just I think it's fairly safe to assume that they're not gonna change the drop rate of third age. But if you spend the next couple of years just going for that, and then they change it, then yeah, that it's fucking nuts. Well, the the other thing is like there is talk on the community of them buffing elites because they're so pointless like a lot a lot of mains just think elites are absolute they're absolute dog shit pointless. yeah yeah i did 200 of them for the untradeable reward and that's it and i got like i think the highest loot i had was the the killed or whatever it's called and it was just released so it was like 10 mil at the time yeah it's probably like maybe like two mil or something at yeah, the moment probably it's just the rewards are so fucking shit yeah <laughs> that's they're... why i never understood why you were going so for it so passionately because all the rewards are just dog shit yeah, it's it's just getting unique. It's like the completionist. In yeah, me, no, in I me. feel you. And I like, you know, I like that you can only get these items from elites. You can't get them from any other tier. You can't get them from masters. It's like, okay, this is elite only, which I, I like. I like being able to do individual mm -hmm. tiers. Eventually, I want to complete all the tiers. But um, the fact about, that there's... About, oh, sorry, Evo. Uh, the fact that there is talk about them making elites better scares me to open them because i love doing clues and opening them immediately i don't like stacking and the the fact that like a change could potentially come makes me like want to stack them but at the same time i would hate the grind if i had to stack them it's just like this awful yeah you, you don't know for how long you're going to be stacking them either the change could take a year it could take two years so exactly. there's no way you're going to be stacking clues for that, that long <laughs> without losing your mind at yeah. least so what do you think about like a an extra tier of clues like a grandmaster tier of clues that gives like a somewhat better chance of third age and maybe the pad. Um, is that something you ever thought about or no? Because I feel like that is I've something they would it. rather implement rather than just changing the drop rate of anything on the clue tables. I just think for elites wise, um, instead of buffing the rewards itself, I think they should make it so like I'm, I'm kind of straying from your question a little bit, but just because um, like I actually want to talk about the Grandmaster clue, but for the elites, I feel like a simple, simple change would be to like decrease the mimic rate from elites from one in thirty-five to like <laughs> one in twenty-five or something. So it's like mm -hmm. sort of balances. Like if you wanted to go for mimics, it's actually slightly better at this point now to do your elites rather than to trade in for masters. Because right now masters are just best in slot for everything. It's like just just trade in for masters. For sure, yeah. it's just, you get everything from it. And better third age, better mimic, better rewards in general. But Grandmaster never thought about it. Have you thought about it? I mean, I, uh, I guess you yeah, have. before mainly because uh, at least a long time ago in the community, it was kind of talks that the, the sorry the Bloodhound was a bit 
Tuver, I guess. So maybe like introducing a Grandmaster tier, which has a slightly reduced drop rate for that, mm. would help with that problem, maybe. Not necessarily in the sense of third age, honestly. I've never thought about that because it's something I would personally never go for. Yeah. Um, I think it would be cool, though, if they managed to properly balance that and extra clue tier. It's hard to find rewards for it, though, I feel like. Rewards and requirements. What would be their requirements? Putting me on the spot here. <laughs> like show an infernal cape. I, like is that Grandmaster? Yeah, enough? I mean that's that that could be a Grandmaster step for sure. Uh, okay. Maybe. So you're not talking like would... extreme. Like go no, no, do no, not infernal. completely inferno, okay. and then no, no. Yeah, okay. I would just say like slightly higher requirements, so like 95 base stats, maybe even max cape stats for the to I do see. all the scaling requirements. Have an infernal cape. Things along those lines would be pretty cool in my opinion. Because I don't think the masters requirements are that high i feel like they're still fairly casual to the point where you can do them if you have like decent stats but not they are max. fairly casual do you I yeah i just remember seeing like i remember thinking elites back in the day back in like 2015 were like pretty <laughs> challenging like dude it's like yeah, yeah. craft the nature rune like 44 yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah of course but the game has also gotten a lot quicker since then so true, i feel true, like true. reaching those requirements is also a lot faster than they were in the past yeah. i don't know i think it would be a cool idea to add an extra grandmaster tier what would be and the? I, would, I wouldn't even benefit from myself because i have the pet and i yeah. haven't done the master clue in like a year what would be the bloodhound rate if there was <sighs> and how would you get the grandmaster mm. what what are your thoughts i think that the maybe the pet rate would be anywhere between like one and five hundred one and seven fifty maybe okay so just like half depending the on how hard it is to acquire okay. the clue as well it's hard to say from just a general concept honestly would it but just be you it... trading in a master for a grandmaster and then risking it, kind of? Or is it, like, a different way to get it? What do you mean by risking it? Like, um, obviously, if you didn't have all the requirements, you could risk getting a higher pet chance, but you're risking getting grandmaster Oh, steps, I think that'd you... be cool. Yeah, yeah. That, is that, that just it? Cool. Then I haven't, that's, that's I haven't really thought it. it through as much right now. Just a random question that popped into my head as we were speaking about clue tiers. But uh, I think that would be a cool way to put it in for sure. Um, maybe as a reward for the Grandmaster Achievement Diaries too. I think that would be cool too. If you have oh, the Grandmaster um, Achievement Diary for PVM, then you have a chance to unlock the, master, the Grandmaster tier. Or so, maybe at the Elite tier even. I don't really know what yeah, would yeah, be yeah. appropriate. But... Um, I know like Vaddy and I uh, already had pretty much covered a lot of it, but what do you think Grandmaster uh, steps on the combat achievements is going to look like? Like, what? How hard do you think those are actually going to look? Do you think it's going to be something very limited players are ever going to be able to accomplish? I think you're looking at the the top five percent people of the game for sure, if not even the top one percent. Yeah, I think oh, I, definitely one percent. I'm thinking like with how yeah, many maybe yeah, five are. would be a bit generous yeah. probably. Um, I think I saw Arcane asking for what the time should be for the Inferno, and he was. I think contemplating making either sub sixty or sub sixty five. I think okay. either of those would be fine. Honestly, I would have no issue with either. I think either are doable. If do you're... you do you think super high level players would be disappointed, saying like, "Wow, this is." I, I think that you don't have to make it sub fifty five. I think I at that think point so you like alienate so many people to the point where I feel like it wouldn't even be worth bringing out new content. Yeah, I think you have to find a balance between what's like really challenging and what's just simply for like the top ten players in the game. Yeah. Definitely from a Jagex perspective, you have to also understand that it's a game are, and like it's a game it's and money. you want more people There's to money play involved. it. Yeah. Money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So sure, I think those top ten players would love to see that and they're probably advocating for it right now. Uh realistically, I don't think that's a great idea. I don't think it's a great idea either. Especially I'm, like if you asked like anybody that's gotten a sub fifty five or like you just ask them how many hours have you actually put into the inferno because you're obviously very good you're very talented mm -hmm. and you put in a ton of practice like how many yeah. realistic hours? like i think of like adwam or jolin like how many hours have you actually put into the inferno because it's all you do hours, it's all you sure. do it's like yeah and i think catering it to those kind of people it would be unfair in general in my opinion yeah. i think i would still go for it if it was sub 55 i think i would eventually be able to get it but still i think it would be it would be a pretty bad way to approach it. Yeah, it would be really tough. And then you also got to think, and I was the same thing I was saying to Vaddy was like, it's not just Inferno's Grandmaster. They're going to come out with exactly, other things. Exactly, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. So it's not just master the Inferno and then be done. It's like, okay, now master chambers. Ma you probably, I'm assuming you're going to have to solo TOB for Grandmaster. Just do a solo TOB. That's what I'm guessing. 
Yeah. Uh, but now, I, I don't, that... don't you think that'd be on the same kind of tier as Sub Fifty Five Inferno? Um, I think with the Blood Fury, I think it's gonna be on Grandmaster because of the fact that I think we tend to skip over Master because there's gonna be Elite, oh, then Master, right, yeah. and then <laughs> oh, Grandmaster. Right, yeah. So it's like there is two more mm. steps after Elite to the point where it's like I really do think solo a tob is going to be on there but there's a blood fury nowadays which makes it significantly easier it's not just a huge like supply you know just make make it with a certain amount of brews like blood fury makes it pretty at least it makes it easy for people that have already completed it i've never done yeah solo for sure TOB. yeah i haven't done it myself so i'm not really sure how difficult it actually is i know a good amount of people have completed it nowadays and for sure if the blood free is going to be more in the future i don't know if it should be on the grandmaster theater it's hard to say i know they're contemplating putting it on there from what yeah. i've seen no it's definitely very very tough but i feel like the reason it's super tough i mean it is super super tough and it's an hour of just like be perfect basically yeah. but it's like mm -hmm. at the same time uh they like most people haven't even attempted it i've never attempted a solo tob Me do neither. i want it's... to hell no it just looks like aids <laughs> yeah, but like same. if it's yeah. on there I would give it a shot. You'd start to learn. There's so many videos out there of people solo TOB being. It's like mm -hmm. the people that have put in, you know, 50 hours into solo TOB, if you're good enough and you, you've done, if you had a lot of experience with the rest of the game, I feel like in 50 hours, you'd probably be able to complete a, sil a solo TOB mm -hmm. if you knew I what think, you were doing and stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think I personally would vote yes for it on, on to be on the Grandmaster tier. But I think that Jaggers are not going to put it on simply because you'd have the same problem with the sub-55 Inferno where you would alienate so many people True. to the point where they would absolutely never be able to get that Grandmaster tier completion. And I think that the I think the rewards from the Grandmaster tier aren't even that insane. Yeah. They, so like but they really couldn't very be that small. insane. Yeah. Like, they couldn't even be that insane in the first place because then people would feel obligated to do Grandmaster. And then at that point, they wouldn't have even have made the I think people that would hard. already feel obligated to go for the highest tier anyway, no matter how good the rewards are. If there's rewards that are useful, people are going to go for that True. or feel in some way obligated. True. Yeah, that, that will be kind of interesting if they ever do pull that because... To be honest, like solo theater of blood, there's so much. Re like I'm just thinking of like phase two Verzik. We're just like this mm -hmm. is so obnoxious. It takes so long. It's just yeah. so obnoxious. Mm -hmm. It's like does Jagex really want to be like incentivizing people like for 15 minutes just dodging a ball and ticking? <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah. No, I've had to put money on it. I would say that they're not gonna put it on there. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, either way, if if they do put it on there, I'll, I'll give it my best. See how far I can get with it. Maybe I can complete it. Maybe not. Yeah, no, that's I, I've never even attempted it. I've I've just seen like a cold one do it a million times, and some other people. I feel like to. it's gonna be tough on Iron Man though, because you're gonna need purple sweets, right? Yep, you need purple sweets. Um, yeah. but you don't need like if you had like two thousand purple sweets, which obviously is a lot, but it's like for me, it's not that many. How many but do you have? I I mean I've I've had probably over thirteen thousand total uh, in my damn, game, yeah. but like right now I have like over eight thousand. And I even use oh. them. Like I use them for Bandos, I use them for Sarah. So mm -hmm. that w that is a good question, though. And then like times for chambers, they're probably going to be grandmasters for God Wars. There's going to be so many things that like yeah, it, ca it can't just be absolute expert level on every piece of content. It's going to be a no, good true. balance. I, I would also like to see like pretty high KC base requirements for like the grandmaster tier, like. Maybe have one K in every boss. That's actually not every boss. Like there's gonna be some like no Jad and stuff like that in Inferno. But I think on the the boss that you can actually get a good amount of kills an hour. It'd be nice to have a somewhat high KC requirement. Gives people just a little bit more incentive to go back to that content and actually like enjoy it for a while. Maybe I'm biased because I have a lot of KC in, in like pretty much every boss. So I don't know. Yeah, I th yeah that's the other thing we were talking about. It's just like it's not just the the speed the speed relics for grandmaster it's also just i'm seriously curious if grandmaster is just gonna say kill zook 50 times or some crazy shit where it's like you just have to grind this out basically like yeah. i th i think like they will have little things like that i don't think it's gonna be any higher than like 50 or anything but i think so too i, I would kind of like that honestly yeah. it's gonna give me something to do yeah and it's just after like i'm done with my current goal so i'm i'm assuming grandmaster will Ooh, I'd actually be very 
curious if they even have like a Casey for like challenge mode raids. Like imagine there was like complete two thousand challenge mode raids for Grand Master. Like, <laughs> There's fuck. so many people would be upset, honestly. That'd yeah. be s- nah, I don't think they will do that. I think they'll keep it at least reasonable for the KC amount. Like four hundred maybe. Yeah, maybe Just for, for the, dust, the drop rate, rate for dust. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or maybe even nah, definitely not a hundred for the first cave unlock. They'll definitely go for a bit higher than that. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I think that'd be cool. Four hundred would be cool. Yeah, I think four hundred re- very balanced. For grand, you have any CM KC? I have like seventeen or something. I hate yeah, it. The... <laughs> I hate it, dude. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you don't really have the Ulmet yet, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, I don't have Ulmet dust or any of the kits, but I've completed all items. So it's like, do I really want to just go camp hundreds of hours for just all cosmetics? Uh huh. Yeah, that's pretty much what I would go for. Yeah. yeah. Like eventually, I would like to, but at the same time. You have so many other goals as well. You have to like balance yeah. it at some point. Even yeah, if there's things you want to do, you just have to like plan that properly. And who knows if they're ever going to release more things? Because I, I didn't think before they had released the kits, I would have never assumed they were going to uh, release another thing to Chambers. Like that would have bothered Dude. me if I grinded out the dust and then they come out with. <laughs> I did 600 CMs before the kits came out and oh, then they came out. Yeah, that's bad. At the same time, it doesn't matter too much because I was working towards the KC kit and the pad anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it would have been nice if the kits were already on that drop table when I started, for sure. So another question is, what is the future of OSRS since we're reaching best-in-slot gear problems? Mm-hmm. Do you agree we're reaching best-in-slot gear problems? Mm, not necessarily, no. I think there's still a good amount of room to improve. I think that banners and armor have been best-in-slot since release pretty much in 2013. Yep. I think there's definitely very easily a way to improve them just slightly. Wouldn't even wouldn't even have to be an insane buff to them, but anything that was better than them would go for a lot of money, probably. Just a slight buff would be fine in that. And then I think that in general magic is kind of lacking to the point where it could benefit from that tome that they were gonna actually introduce with Ashihama. Oh yeah. And maybe even a damage boosting prayer, just like regular and piety would have. I think there's still a good amount of room for improvement in any combat style, really, without making it absolutely nuts. What do you think? Um, it's pretty good. Like, I think um, I never want, and they've done a great job of it so far, like adding like attachments to um, God Wars things. It's going back to what I talked with talked about with Vaddy. It was just like making it so if they ever do come out with just a uh, objectively better piece of armor just add more strength or something to like something that's actually just better than bandos in every way make it so you have to either sacrifice a bando set for it or like it's like an attachment to it or something Mm -hmm. just so it's not because what we see right now is like um i don't know it's like kind of hard to say but i don't really like it when Iron Man, and again, I just think of an Iron Man because I've just played it for so long. It's like of an, course, an, yeah, an yeah. Iron Man can just be a level seventy, get carried at TOB, and get all these like great weapons mm-hmm. and shit, and it's like mm-hmm. just skip all over all this other shit, like just skip it literally. So it's like, I feel like if they just like I don't know, I guess God Wars will always have their uniques and their pets and stuff like that, but like it would really be a shame if it just had zero incentive like gear wise. Like if they just came out with a ranged armor that has a strength bonus. I really, it would really be a shame if just um, Armadale was just useless. It, I would love it if you had to sacrifice an Armadale set once you get the drop just to be able to use it or something, you know, like something yeah, that's keeping cool. God Wars mm-hmm. somewhat relevant. Yeah, I feel you on that. I think uh, when they were talking about that mage tome that they were going to add from Ashihama, I think from the community it was kind of suggested to add it to the arcane sigil. Yeah. And I then they were reluctant great. to actually do that. I think that would have been a great idea to keep Same. both the old shield very valuable, like valuable, and make the new Bass and Salt come from a new boss. I think that would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been per- I, the I, perfect thing. I, what was the reason they didn't? Just not enough time? They just didn't want to um, like... I think it was honestly, I don't know why they didn't add it. I think it passed too. I think they felt like it was too powerful in the end, maybe. Or just it was a very powerful. I know the <laughs> meme was Husky doesn't want to grind corp or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's more yeah. of a Twitter meme, maybe Definitely than a meme. the actual reason. Uh, doesn't he have an arcane? Twitch? Pretty sure he like. I, I, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know. really know. Honestly, I I can't comment on that. Yeah, I don't know. That if was just all memeing though. But I remember. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're if you're a Jmod, you go through some shit from the from Twitter for sure. Oh yeah. But I think that's a that's a great 
way to introduce new gear for the future bosses. I think an arcane upgrade would be great for magic and a prayer boosting. Uh, sorry, a damage boosting prayer would be great for magic too. I think there's always a way to incorporate old gear uh, when you're thinking of new gear. Yeah. No, I think it would be actually really cool if they came out with a new boss that adds a little bit of magic damage to the arcane and then adds a um, a damage reducer on the spectral. Something where if you're attacked with magic, it actually reduces damage. By no, like that'd be cool. Bit. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that'd be awesome. Give, it a, bit, give it a bit more of a niche. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like that, honestly. To keep the old content relevant while yeah. also introducing new good, good content. I think that they may have missed the balancing on that tome they were originally going to introduce. It was a bit too powerful, maybe. I think it yeah. was like, wasn't it like 15% damage originally bonus? Mm. I think 15 it was, maybe. No, there's no way it was 15. I think it was 15, honestly. <laughs> and if it wasn't 15, it was at least, it was at least 10 if it wasn't 15. Okay, I did not think it was. I thought, wasn't it like five or no 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 it was it at least just... 10 for sure jesus More than 10. christ man that is so, so if you busted. think about it like the full ancestral set gives a six percent yeah. that's three pieces of the armor <laughs> so they were going to introduce a 15 in one 15? slot God. i think it was 15 so uh, maybe bad. someone in the comments can correct me if i'm wrong but either way it was very very powerful yeah. and I think that's on why... top of that it was also accurate it was also like yeah. as accurate as a mage book where it's like Mm -hmm. Oh, wasn't it originally an attachment to the Mage Book? I can't remember. Or was it just uh, yeah, it was actually, standalone? Yeah, it was an attachment to the Mage Book, okay. and then people suggested it should come from the sigil. Yeah, instead, I, I agree and that's with where that. the conversation kind of went south. <laughs> yeah, I would really love attachments to those shields, especially. I'm really thinking of the spectral one as well, where it's like if you're attacked with magic and you're wearing it, it actually reduces damage as well as just. Accuracy. Where would that be useful? I'm just trying to. It think would be great for wilderness tanking. Um, All right. If, if it mm -hmm. if it could actually compare to an Ellie, because right now Ellie's just always better defensively because mm -hmm. it just has actual damage reduction. If if Ellie stayed as it is, but defended against all style attacks, and a spectral could just be barely better with mage. So to the point where it's like you could be attacked with melee and you're you're not defending against it with any damage reduction, but it's just barely better than an Ellie with mage attacks coming your way, like. I think that would be a great addition where Spectral's actually, okay, this is the tank shield for maging, like for for when you're getting maged. And it would and be you great. you like that attachment to come from a new boss, you said? Yeah, yeah. Just any, yeah, I like that. Uh -huh. Anything that's going to come out in the future. Maybe even like Raids 3, have attachments to Corp at Raids 3 or something. Yeah, it sounds good. What do you think about the Nightmare Rewards, though? Um, What do you mean? Like, just... How good do you think they are? Do you think they... Oh, just what we have too now. Many, no, you're not talking about the Tome or anything? No, no, what not the Tome. The actual rewards. Um, so, personally, Inquisitors needs uh, an additional buff. I'm just going to say it. Like, the 1%, the the 0.5% damage does nothing. It actually does nothing. Even if you're wearing two pieces, it will never increase your max hit on any mm -hmm. weapon ever. It just won't. So... My idea is to make it so each piece gives a 1% damage. And obviously, it has the accuracy as well, the 0.5, which does very mini minuscule amounts but of DPS increase. But if they increased the pieces to, instead of right now, 0 0.5 per piece and then a 2.5 total when you're wearing the full set, it would be 1% per piece and then a 4% total damage boost. So that would give you an extra max hit, you say? So that will give an additional max hit... Um, so if you're wearing just two pieces, as long as your max hit is above a 50, it will hit um, an extra max hit because that's how it would work. If it's 2%, you need to do a 50. And if it's a 4% with the full set, every 25 damage. So if you did, so a ham joint would get a max hit, for example, if it was a 4% buff because ham joint, I think is bet, uh, it's, it doesn't reach 50 as a yeah, max it's like, hit. Yeah, it's like 30 mm -hmm. or something. But if it had a 4% boost, it could have a max hit. And then anything above 50 would all, would have two max hits over what we have now. Or it would be one additional max hit to what we have now. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a great addition because right now, yes, it's got its niche, but it's so squishy. Like, And the fact that you can't <laughs> even use it with KQ and Serb on tap. Like it's, it's, like, oh, it's almost pointless to wear it to KQ and serve on task because you're not getting a max hit i think you're actually losing a max hit for accuracy because of the helmet or sorry you're going to be wearing a slayer helmet so sorry that was irrelevant if you're wearing a slayer <laughs> helmet and you're wearing yeah. the inquisitors you're not getting any damage you're just getting a slight amount of accuracy and 
horrible defense. Like that. Yeah, that's gonna be an issue, especially for Iron Man needing to rely on supplies to stay there. I think I, I did KQ with the set, but with alts, that would actually like heal myself. So I've never had an issue with the tankiness of the set. Yeah, and KQ. It was really nice for that for that uh, original Dragon Warhammer hit. It was huge. I mean, it actually made a big difference between Banos and Inquisitor sets and the kills an hour at the time. I remember. True. That was just for that specific method, so I'm sure it's different no, for Iron Man. It's it's mainly Serb, I think about, I guess, because KQ has 100% accuracy with its attacks, where it's like you could be a squish, mm-hmm. you could be naked, and it would just basically do yeah, the same. Yeah, it, it will always fuck you up. But I like remember doing Serb. solo KQ and hating every single second of it. That was the worst <laughs> boss. Just take 30 ones, just constantly. <laughs> It's so bad. Yeah, it it reminds me of um, Fossil Island Wyverns. So the worst three monsters in the game: KBD, Fossil Island Wyverns, and KQ, because they're just they fuck you up regardless of anything you do. Yeah, like just, there's no actual mechanics that you can... And especially uh, yeah. Fossil Island Wyverns. Now that I have a shield, it's irrelevant to go there in the first place, which uh-huh. sucks because they're just... But you just get frozen over and over and over, and you're just taking yeah, tons of damage, and there's that nothing to do. Awful. It's yeah. awful. <laughs> oh, so bad. They really yeah. just fucked up with Fossil Island Wyverns. I can see your, I can see your point with the Inquisitors. Although I've used it in so many places, but... It was not that I think about is mainly for the the spec. I use that corp on my alt, uh, for example. Yeah. So the difference between specking on the little Warhammer on corp and Bandos and an Inquisitor set is huge. Like it would speed up the kills an hour by at least five to seven by using Inquisitor sets on the alt instead of the the Bandos sets. But yeah, it's from a different point of view, of course. Yeah. No. And the other thing is just like I. It's just a shame that it's barely better for like i'm thinking you know selfishly i'm going to be doing seracnus it's not even worth it yeah. to use that seracnus which no, is a it's shame not. dude i was getting fucked there in like uh, actual good mage defense gear. yeah i hated you... that boss yeah. i've died more there than in any other of the high level bosses <laughs> no joke that was so bad yeah i suck at seracnus <laughs> i'm like i know how to do it uh well to the point where you will basically never get melee or range but it's just those mm-hmm. mage spiders that just fuck you up even if you're wearing good mage stuff you st- still have bad kills but um yeah true. i just i really wish they could just increase the inquisitor set by a little bit more so it's justifiable to use it there yeah i think i at the time pulled um was a poll question to remove the negative slash uh bonus i think which i think if that would have passed it would have been the peasant slot set anywhere maybe it would outclass banners everywhere i think but it didn't pass so and now it's only yeah. useful against the boss that have uh very low crush defense I was actually totally okay with them not making it, or I was I was okay with them having negative stats. I know it would be really nice for like claws and stuff, mm-hmm. and like BGS and stuff. But like, or I guess you would never use a BGS because, well, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, I see what you mean there, where you could just camp it. But I do like that it has a negative aspect to it. I I was just really hoping for an upgrade to ban those because we've had it so for so long. So I was kind of bummed out by that uh, that ball. Yeah. No. But in the future, I'm sure they're gonna update that. I think that's one of the the uh, few places they can still make some updates, gear upgrades. Yeah, but uh, speaking of what you were talking about, like just other nightmare items, Eldritch and Volatile. I think the <laughs> only so you went. I'm assuming most of your solos that you did toward the end before you got the pet, mm-hmm. you were you were just trying to be as fast as possible. Uh, yeah. And you had best in slot gear. Did you ever bring a volatile staff? No, volatile is not worth bringing. Is it not? No, it's it's always best from what we calculated with a couple of people that did a lot of nightmare solos to just. Well, I didn't do the calculations. I'm taking way too much credit for this, but it's been calculated that it's always best to warhammer. It's still better than slightly better than claws even, and you need that claw spec for the parasite on P2, yeah. right? If, if you don't claw the parasite, you're gonna lose a lot of time from the yeah. healing effect. So Volatile is never going to be better than Claws. Whereas in Team Nightmares, I used Volatile quite a lot for the pillars. Yeah, It was actually also worth it because I think that the the pillar damage counted way more to MVP than the actual shield phase. Yeah. So doing any like additional... Equal. Yeah, I don't think they're equal. They're, they're so, like... Well, what I heard is that they're equal, but because the the pillar phase is so much shorter, every single thing is like accent... Like ah, that could be it. Accentuated yeah. or whatever the word is. Either way, it was very very much worth it to fall out spec the pillar if you cared somewhat for mvp and since mvp gave a better patch chance i used that quite a bit there the eldritch orb though don't even have one honestly never used it will use it completely useless i have no idea why it's still so much money i 
it's just rare and people are it's the same reason thamarin scepter was always like <laughs> well at least before the whole rev buff and everything years ago it was like always camped at like five mil when it was actually garbage just because people F thought it was going to have a buff funny story about that i bought 181 scepters for <laughs> 7.3 mil i think that equals out to like 1.3 bill in total Jesus. i still have them let's just say that they're still worth 200 mil Jeez. <laughs> because I, I at the time i just thought at some point surely they're gonna update yeah. these. there's no way these are gonna say so shit for so long but I think it's been over a year since I bought them. And, uh, just yeah, keep holding. My, keep holding on the my, my money has just diminished from that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I kind of... But yeah. That's that's definitely some of the... I know Iron Man, like, you have to be self-sufficient and stuff. And there, there's its own perks with that. But I kind of miss being able to, like, make money from just flipping shit and just going off of, like, certain items that may or may not get buffed. Oh, it's such a nice feeling to make money over flip because you're essentially not doing anything, yeah. like pretty much making money overnight. And I'm just, I'm gonna be honest, I'm really bad at merching. I've probably lost more money than I've ever made from it, uh, especially if that 1.1 bill loss from the scepter is. But yeah, yeah, it's it's cool to see that some people were really good at that, actually uh, make it a viable way of making money for them, because that is the definition of zero time GP. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Mm, harmonized. I kind of like the harmonize. It's it's not too OP, but it's good in certain places. It has definitely yeah. Now harmonize has value was, was a great addition. It's just yeah. I'm just advocating so much to just give burnt pages through other means, whether that be burning god pages from clues, just something that kind of makes sense. Like that would make sense if you had 99 fire making. There's a way to like just barely toast your pages to make them burnt pages, <laughs> and they're god yeah. pages already, so they have some sort of magical property. And they then, are very hard to come by. I think at the point as an iron, you have to just balance out where you're going to use it and yeah, which where you might have to settle for the less. I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea, but that's coming from someone who is not an iron man. It just seems yeah. to make a lot of sense that as an iron man, you have to make sacrifices that you wouldn't as a main. Yep. No. How do you I, look at that? I agree, but it would be sim I don't know. It'd be kind of similar to just if you got a scythe and let's just say. I don't know. I guess Scythe kind of has the same thing where it's like you still need vials of blood, so you're going to need to do endless amounts of... So the blood runes are there. actually viable to keep up with, right? Yeah, it's like dependent. I've it, seen you, because I've seen you do Nightmare for yeah. oh, I months do and months, and I know I spent way over a billion GP just buying blood runes from my Nightmare grind, so I'm thinking, how is an Iron Man going to sustain that long yeah, as a Scythe? No, it, it just depends on what your other goals are. Like, if I was to plan on doing, like, 200 mil smithing or 200 mil uh con or 200 mil fletching or something which i don't plan to do mm -hmm. yet i mean maybe one year i'll never know go for yeah. xp and stuff but like i don't care i don't care about my gp so is it worth it for me honestly it's like hard to say because you have to also factor in the time of just buying blood runes which yeah is if you calculated everything like that is dps loss but the fact that my kills are just faster makes my mind Anyways. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun factor as yeah. well. Exactly, yeah. like just doing it with a bludgeon. Like nightmare souls are already pretty aged. Not gonna lie. Yep. Doing it with a bludgeon just would make it ten times worse than so it already bad. is. So yeah, now I feel that you <laughs> make the sacrifice of XP to just have a bit less of a bag around that nightmare. Yeah, and after like I've already I've already calculated how much money and everything I'm gonna make from Seracnus in the future. Like, money will never be an issue, especially with my mindset. As as soon as I get a mace, I probably won't even use my scythe anymore. Even for like Serb and KQ, I probably will just enjoy using my mace with a little yeah, bit lower sure. DPS and just enjoy the mace, uh -huh. you know. So this is just a very temper, like just like really short period of time where I'm using my scythe and like, well, I hope it's <laughs> the a short <laughs> period is becoming quite long. <laughs> I hope it's a little bit. I don't know. But, How are you dealing with that? Like being dry for like this many, this many hours, and what's your mindset to the? Well, the I, next few months. Yeah, no, I initially thought I would just spoon a mace. I just thought I would, at, like, starting out. I kept, like, telling people on my rambles and stuff, like, oh, you know, if I go dry, oh, that would suck and stuff. But deep down, I was like, no, nah, I'm going to get lucky. On it's it. not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm, like, I'm, like, 16, 30 kills or something like that. So, like, I am overrate. Um, I, in, deep down in my mind, though, I have this feeling. It's like, oh, I'll get it before 2K. Actually, that's fading. I think I'll get it before 2400, though. <laughs> but, like, yeah. every time I approach the number, I'm like, oh, shit, it's not going to happen. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, if, if I don't go past 4K solos, 
I'll be fine on money. I just got to spend a little bit of time alking, getting more blood runes. But I do not. I, I've heard Lake switch to a bludgeon because he wants to use a scythe at other places and he just can't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He just doesn't Got want to use anymore. But for me, I'm mm -hmm. gonna I'm gonna keep using my scythe for all it's worth. Like I'm gonna I'll milk I'll liquidize my entire bank to keep using a scythe till I get the mace. It'd be so depressing to spend all that money just to not <laughs> yeah. get the mace. Dude. I'm just thinking about that. Like it's a very possible situation scenario. I feel like. Yeah, but at the It'd same. It'd be very unlikely, but it's it's not impossible. Exactly. But at the same time, it's like I think to myself, I have a scythe. Why not use it where it's the very best? Like where it's just I'm getting the most use out of it here. Because, like, mm -hmm. what, what would be the point of even using it if all the time you're just thinking, oh, I'm wasting so much money using it? True. So, that's how I see it. How and viable I, are the, the, what's it called? The vials of blood, though? Because um, I feel like they're pretty... I feel like I did a lot of TUB. I did, like, 1.1k, and I feel like I ran out of mine that I got myself fairly quickly. Yeah. No, I mean, vials of blood actually sustain pretty heavily. So, it's, like, 60,000 bloods and 200 vials. It's, like, for a full for a full scythe yeah. charge, it's, mm -hmm. like, it's only 200 vials. So, it's, like... I've I used. I guess I used to size quite a lot. Then. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. So yeah. I've used about uh, 1.5, 1.6 million bloods so far just this year with Seracnus and Tob. Mm -hmm. And if I so I divide that by four, two. So I've used like 5,000 vials of blood. I think. I think that's uh -huh. just 5,000. So yeah. um, yeah, 5,000 vials of blood, and I I still have like 4k left. Oh, and, okay. So you'd be fine for a while then. Yeah, I'll yeah. be fine for a little bit longer. Um, but like somebody was, uh, I was talking to, uh, one of my friends, my Iron Man friends, and he made a, uh, spreadsheet of like some Seracnus calcs and stuff. And he was saying like, what, what would be like how much it would, how many vials of blood it would take to do 300,000 Seracnus through a scythe. And it was, he just said it was like 4,000 TOB, like just do 4,000 TOBs and then you're set for vials of blood for how much Seracnus I plan mm -hmm. to do. But yeah, it's quite a lot of time you're spending on something that's not actually your goal. Exactly. Especially once you have all the items, it's, it's not going to be worth that time. I feel like on average, I'm sure it's going to average out that getting the maze will be a lot faster to do than just that. No, I, yeah, no, I think Iron Man, the factoring in buying blood runes and stuff just makes things complicated DPS wise. For mains, obviously, Scythe is just really good because it's zero. Yeah, there's no is. reason to ever not use a Scythe wherever yeah. you go. You make always make money wherever you go, pretty much. So if you're not using a Scythe when you have one, what are you even doing, honestly? I've seen people kill things in like an uncharted site, which is, just blows my mind, honestly. I don't know how people can even come up with all those ideas. It makes no sense. So I have an, my own topic that I wanted to discuss. Mm -hmm. um, who are your... I guess I th I want to ask this, but I want to ask like in two parts. Who are the pl who are your favorite OSRS players? Just who have either motivated you or who you were just inspired or just inspired by, or just are super gamers that don't get enough credit or something. Just who are your favorite uh, players? Like I don't know, top two or three, and then um, what makes a good OSRS player? Just in general, it doesn't have to be skilling center doesn't have to be pvm centered pet hunting centered anything just what makes a good player i'll answer the second question first i think what makes a good player in this game because everything is so time-based i feel like i feel like consistency is the number one factor of what makes you good at the game if you stick to whatever you're doing you're eventually going to get it so sticking to a certain goal for a long period of time is what is probably considered for me to be the most important feature of a good player it's not necessarily the mechanically good players like uh, let's say Wooks or Exact, that really impressed me. It's just people that like can mentally stay, <laughs> um, go for the same goal for thousands and thousands of hours. That's what impresses me more than someone who can do like a sub sixty inferno, a sub sixty, a sub fifty five inferno, whatever. Yeah. Uh, in that sense, I'm thinking that uh, it's hard to say a top three of best players. People that someone that I liked in the uh, in the past a lot was Autumn Allergy. I really loved his videos and his mindset to the game. Even though I'm not a scaler, I still found that his view of the game was somewhat similar to mine. And he was good at really sticking to long-term goals and somehow making content around something that's not very interesting, but still making it interesting to his viewers. I feel like he was a big advocate for like the, the high-level community at the time. I think he was a great, uh, great YouTuber as well. I think, ah, hard to say for people that 
are like really good. I think that from for pet hunting, I'm thinking maybe like uh, a guy called Taikos. I don't know if you know. Yep. He has all pets, and he's gotten the unluckiest out of everyone really? so far. Yeah, How many hours? He's at seven. He's at seven k hours now, Jeez. which is not that far off what I have, honestly. But still, yeah. like I know how hard that is. So I think that that's great. Uh, Casey as well, obviously. He's, he may have spent more hours than than seven k, probably. If you look at the Bloodhound and all that grind he's done, maybe slightly more. So what? probably probably them too for the pet hunting. Is is uh, Bloodhound hours just calculated on completing the clues, or is it calculated mm, on? I think they should more? be, but they're not. Yeah. So I think that the Bloodhound pet rate is currently calculated to actually where you actually have to spend time getting the elites. So it's fairly high on the sheet in hours, but I, I disagree. I think you get roughly 900 elites from all the passive pet hunts you do. So you pretty much add drop rate by then. And I think that if you buy a thousand clues, like a thousand elites, it costs like six bill nowadays, which sounds like a lot, but <laughs> for a lot of end game PVMers, that's uh, yeah, that's absolutely nothing. So I think it, it's very viable to go for the Bloodhound nowadays as opposed to a couple years ago. So I think that the actual hours for Bloodhound are probably like 250. 200 maybe even if you're good at them yeah if you so were, i don't think it's and i think it's like i know the olympus sheet for ehc efficient hours clues is just based on the time actually completing the clue and it's like how much is it it's like four masters an hour i think they say so okay yeah so like me i let's just say like i'm not at 400 yet but just to simplify it if i was at 400 that's only 100 hours efficiently mm -hmm. that's yeah that's not that much that's not that much honestly yeah i know a lot of people that uh a lot of my friends are doing clues and they're pretty good at them and they say they can get roughly five an hour if they have ims yeah i think so, five and, i think four is very just generous because i yeah unless you mm -hmm. get like back to back to back dragon eye or some bullshit well actually so, in that yeah. case that would be nice but so by that analogy it kind of makes uh doing six thousand master clues pretty much the same as doing 15k nightmare and hours wise so yeah. yeah i don't know it's it depends on how you play i guess but i think if you play smart enough you can as a main account as a pet hunter you can always get the blood out no problem you can always buy it i think it only starts to become a problem when you go like three times the rate maybe then if yeah. you have to afford it yourself it's going to be rough and even then i think nowadays with how easy it is to make money if you wanted it to as a high level pvmer i think it still shouldn't be an issue you yeah. can make like upwards of 30 million an hour consistently no rng involved by boosting other pet hunters and there's plenty of people that need boosts and most people so aren't going to be going over three times the rate for Bloodhound. Exactly. Or so the, the amount times. of people that go over three times the rate is so small that's pretty much negligible. Yeah. It's just funny so how, think... like, one of the first people... I, I always just find it silly how, like, some of the first people go, like, the driest or go the luckiest. It's kind of like um, like Casey's example is, like, one of the, like, unlucky, where it's like he was yeah. one of the first people going for Bloodhound, and, like, he mm -hmm. went super dry. But then on the opposite side of the spectrum is, like, ultimate low fully completing nightmare first person ever no dupes oh like, man i remember that i was so depressing i remember that yeah, <laughs> yeah. holy he completed on like 3k kills i yeah. think including the back yeah, yeah. Uh, as an ultimate uh, that was nuts just like the mm -hmm. first player is an ultimate that's incredible in the first place and then just no dupes what yeah. the fuck i remember because i was actually i was getting pretty close to being the first one to complete the log and then he if like not even half my kc he just zoom press me like instantly yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's crazy yeah um, what was the top? Oh, what about your favorite players then? Top three. Um, good question. Uh, mine always comes down to like again what you said, consistency, and um, as much as like I, I mean, I think Autumn Elegy was a great player. Um, obviously he's focused a lot more on IRL now, mm -hmm. which to me, again, my own opinion. What makes a great OSRS player, which is just the most nerdy thing you can ever like be good at, which I fully admit, you know, being a good OSRS player involves like sacrificing IRL to be an actually truly good player. But um, you know, I I look at players that have stuck with the game through and through, even even with shitty updates that come out, they won't get like a great player understands that the game's getting devalued and they'll yeah, manage sure. through it. Mm -hmm. We'll, you know, adapt. And again, um, there's a lot of great players, but a lot of them just have IRL things to do, which is totally fair. But in my mind, I just don't think those, I think they kind of lose their qualification to be a great play, great OSRs player. Again, my own qualifications. So I think, mm -hmm. um, Hey Jace is probably like oh yeah he's up there for yeah sure. he's probably mm -hmm. like the one of the best 
if not like the best like consistency wise just even after 200 mil all has put in so many hours into the game and is going for a completionist yeah um for sure i think iron higer is one of like the all-time greats just because not only does he like it's just an insane gamer super efficient but he comes out with like he pioneers methods and stuff and he is a fucking genius like he makes spreadsheets that are like perfectly accurate with you know calculations on yeah the big brain yeah just huge (laughs) brain but it's not just the huge brain he's got like it's like the brain and the brawn you know like yeah yeah and the thing is he he plays other game modes and stuff like he'll he'll randomly go on leagues and just you know get the top one percent like he'll just didn't he'll do he get other like things. the didn't he almost win the last one the twisted leagues or was that not him i'm not sure yeah i know hi higer a or higer higera or whatever you pronounce that name as that's his uh his alt so i don't know uh, i, I thought don't know he like ended was. like top 10 at least but i could be wrong i'm not sure he might yeah, be right but he also played dead man mode i'm pretty sure mm-hmm. uh, wasn't he like first or second to max on dead man mode i don't know if i'm i don't remember that honestly yeah i don't all, all I know is that he's just like one of the all-time bests, in my opinion. Um, Dids as well. Like I'm going past now, but like yeah, I just keep going. It's fine. Yeah, I'm just I'll allow it. <laughs> there's a lot of really great players, but what the great players are the ones that keep playing. They don't burn out, and they just will push through grinds and stuff. And like, um, there's another player. I'm, I'm like I'm like stalling to try to think of this player in my mind. But um, oh, I got to give credit to Shadow Roca as well. Iron oh, Man. Oh yeah, I watch I watch quite a bit of his streams actually. Yeah. Iron I Man like PVMer. Yeah. I don't think he gets the credit. Like I don't think he gets enough credit as he deserves because um, the man fucking games. Like he, he goes I, hard. He I, I, goes I keep, so I keep hard. up with his progress as well. Yeah, he he's beast. Yeah. Yeah. No, he goes so hard. He has he has an Iron Man that's like. Like he's he only started his Iron Man like I think less than two years ago or something, and his mm-hmm. Iron Man's fucking incredible. Like it's so good, and I yeah, can't no. say he's like the very best mechanically, but he can learn things. He because he pushes through and he learns things, and like he's just. I think, an in, a over- game, I think in a game of RuneScape, mechanic skills aren't that important to me at least personally. Yeah. I don't I don't value that over consistency or like. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh-huh. if we were to say skill wise, exact is the greatest of all time. In my, mm-hmm. I know that sounds really sacrilegious because of Wooks, but mechanically yeah, I wise, think that, they're pretty close, honestly. Like Wooks, Wooks is probably the best because of he is a pioneer, yeah. so he would like be the first to do things. But I think just purely mechanic wise, is exact because of just the fact that he did a forty combat inferno is fucking mind-boggling yeah. it is mind-boggling like i can't even i can't even like give it enough credit in words it's just insane to be that mechanically gifted and to be that consistent over a super long period of time of just don't miss a flick and know yeah, exactly it's not just mm-hmm. don't miss a flick but it's to n- know how to navigate certain situations and stuff like it's insane but yeah we're, we're not i'm not talking about mechanically gifted here but Shadow Roke, I gotta give him a big shout out. He is super consistent, and he's just yeah, a fucking huge. Yeah, I respect gamer. that too. Mm-hmm. If only he was a main path hunter, man. Damn. <laughs> Wasted opportunity. No, I'm <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, kidding, I'm, I'm so happy he's an Iron Man because there's not very many Iron Man, at least streamers wise, that are as much as big of a PVMer as he is. He is. I think in general, like when I watch Twitch, there's not that many people that are super dedicated to one account. When I scroll to the directory. Don't yeah. you think? I don't know. I feel like the it's a lack of variety in some way in Twitch content. I like to watch people that have clearly dedicated a lot of their time to their accounts, just stuck with things through thousands and thousands of hours. And there's just not that many people on Twitch like that. I don't know if you feel the same way. I but... completely feel the same way. There are so many remake Andes, and then yeah, not only yeah. not only remakes that are just hardcore focused, but like even people that just burn out of their account like oh let's make another one like you know yeah. and like snowflake iron man do the same thing where it's like oh let's make oh, another i account. hate that let's shit that. don't get me don't and get me like, started on snowflakes i love people that stick to one account like whether it be skilling whether it be pvm anything like that i love it when people stick to one account because it shows all their progress like curtis is a big one it's just always stuck sure. to his one account iron queen always slash too always slash, Ari slash yeah. i like watching him quite a bit uh even fat clouds like skilling base yeah. he just 
he has and two has bill two xp, bill XP yeah. yeah it's not i like that too honestly i what i like about someone is if i check into his, his stream in january and then come back a year later to see what they've done in that year and see yep. how much that kind of progress that's what i want to see and that's what gets me invested in some someone's stream rather than their personality necessarily yeah and i agree with that where it's like i go for the content and like if somebody's just at the beginning game again, re remaking an account, I have zero interest. I'm like, oh yeah, no, God. For, for the same for it's me painful. for sure. I like the people. I like their people be passionate about what they've doing, what they've done in the game, rather than someone who's restarting all the time. And don't get me wrong, I understand the restarting because it's worked out for a lot of people. Like one, uh, for the couple of big Twitch streamers there are, it just works out very well because people just somehow love watching it. So I get that's a very good Twitch move to do, but I personally yeah. can't be asked to get invested into those accounts because I know that if they're on Winter Thought in February, they're going to be back at Winter Thought in July again. So it's like, what's the point in even yeah. putting your time into oh watching that person? You know, I don't really care much for people's personalities necessarily. Yeah. And people, the thing is, is like RuneScape is a very grind based game. And it's mm -hmm. like people just, people that aren't super into the game, it's, you're going to see, they're just going to burn out of their account and they're, but if they want to stick with OSRS, they have to make a new account. And it's like, yeah. okay, like really you couldn't have just <laughs> grinded past that point or something, which is fine because a lot of people love it. A lot of people love it when people just, um, you know, do low level, mid level grinds again, do chambers all over again. Like, God damn it. Why are you doing chambers all over again? Like, <laughs> I would not be able to, uh, to motivate myself to do something again. I've already done so many times. Like, <sighs> I don't know. I'm just too invested into my main account to the point where I wouldn't sacrifice any progress on that account for anything else. Yeah. And I think because I am a very long-term player and I have, um, luckily I'm like blessed to have like the opportunity to stream and stuff and to yeah. like, you know, progress, uh, my account, uh, without any other real distractions. It's like, it's nice for me because if I even thought about making a new, account it just feels like a waste of time it feels like all this time it's the same oh, thing with it leagues it's the same thing with leagues where it's like if i played yeah, leagues, bring that up yeah all these hours are just i could have put it on this account but nope it's gone now yeah it's like maybe in the moment you'd enjoy it more but if, when january comes around and you've spent 500 hours on leagues i don't know then yeah you, you can't help but think damn if i only spent those 500 hours on my main account i would have been so much happier right now <laughs> yep yeah I'm, I'm the same way when it comes to that well, I don't have any more topics. Uh, How long has this gone on for? Uh, two are? hours and seven minutes right now. Oh, pretty that's respectable. Not that bad. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty decent. Yeah, I don't really have anything that I want to bring up anymore. I think I've, I've set my piece. Yeah, no, this, I feel like we got through all the meat. Um, so I guess just uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Maybe give a shout out to a player that don't, don't, they don't have to be the greatest players of all time, but just. Um, shout outs or anything not necessarily i want to shout out to pat hunter's discord for being a very viable sorry a very good piece of information for upcoming pat hunters so if you're interested in hunting any kind of pets feel free to join it's discord.gg slash pets it has a lot of guides for pet hunting and it's a pretty big community but 5k people right now um me yeah. and myself help put together some guides for that and we're always um down to help people out who are just getting into pet hunting even if you have a low amount of pets i would very much encourage you to join that discord we're definitely looking for if you uh, send me a um like a lifetime link i can put it in the yeah i got you i got you i feel like i would help a lot of people out i've known some of actually someone contacted me today and said that i had to shout the discord out because it was that good so that's my only shout out really i'm not going to promote awesome. anything from myself other than um, that uh, and then, yeah, so I'll, I will put uh, Valor's, that, that Discord link in the description, as well as his Twitter and his Twitch. Um, yeah, I know I'm you're planning not, to like, stream it again in the future, but perfect. I haven't done it in a bit. But <laughs> yeah, I used to be very consistent with it. Yeah, you were. The, um, I was so, yeah. there all the time, pretty much, but not anymore. Anyway. So follow him on Twitch, follow him on Twitter, um, and then obviously join the Discord if you're into uh, pet hunting and it was a pleasure man this is awesome yeah i had fun man this is really good and i'm uh, i'm looking forward to the future once you do awesome well and i think next week we're getting ari slash on so i know oh that's dope yeah. had a, a few of the a few of the topics from ari i think i'm gonna try to get ari on during the holidays and then i even have plans 
in the future to add a couple. I don't know if I should spoil it yet, but we got some other. Maybe keep it a surprise. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep it a surprise, mm-hmm. maybe. But uh, look forward to that, guys. And I appreciate you guys all listening. And Valor, thank you so much for taking your time to My be pleasure. on here. So, all right. Have a great day, guys.